What is up, fight fans? Good morning. We are live on MMA Weekly, the most trusted source of news and entertainment in mixed martial arts for almost 20 years. Happy Tuesday morning to you. Hope you all had a great holiday weekend. And hey, hope we all remembered the reason for the season yesterday. And the reason for the season yesterday was absolutely all those amazing men and women, the brave men and women who have given their lives and paid the ultimate cost, made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And of course, it was a day, as Jeff Kane so eloquently put on his own Facebook page, a day for us to remember Ryan Bennett, a pioneer in this industry, Jeff, and a guy who got MMA Weekly started 20 years ago, just about, and, and one of the one of the true geniuses and one of the guys who helped us all get to where we are, not only with MMA Weekly, but in this sport, did so much for the sport, for the UFC, and his short life on this planet. And I know he meant the world to you and to all of us here at MMA Weekly. So we remember Ryan Bennett. We all celebrate Memorial Day and remember those who pay the ultimate cost for the red, white, and blue. And we come back on Tuesday with UFC Fallout. Good morning, Jeff. I hope you had a good weekend, man. I did. I had a pretty good weekend. Got a concert in and then life. <laughs> you know, life life of a parent and, a, and a, you know, a husband and a dad. It's a, but yeah, man, we had a good weekend. We cooked out. Uh, kind of stayed around around the house, though, after that concert. We, I, I saw Billy Strings at the Bonnaroo Farm on Friday with a in, in, in a torrential downpour, but it was oh a, it was God. an amazing concert. I enjoyed. How it. much weed did you smoke? <laughs> every, Are they still doing every that at concerts? Every bit offered, Jim. Every bit offered. Um, I like how you say that. Every bit offered, and I love the old pictures, man. I love all the throwback pics of early twenties. I'm guessing Jeff Kane, no gray in the beard yet, at all these concerts and festivals and. It made me think back, man. I got to start digging through those crates, like my friend AL3 says, digging through those crates and um, finding some of those old pictures because I saw those old pictures of you. You don't look that much different, man. You haven't put on that big amount of weight. Like a lot of us gain a ton of weight as we get older, and you almost look the same. Just only thing is that that gray beard, man. It's the Yeah, it's the gray beard. Yeah, man, I, I have friends. I don't know because I didn't find those photos. I have friends that keep sending me photos of, I guess they're, in their forties now, or even late forties and kind of feeling nostalgic and going through old photos and sending me pictures of events that I don't remember being at. <laughs> yeah, now, no, I remember them. I remember them. Now you remember them. You're like, wait a minute. Was that the night that was, wait a minute. Was that, the night that, was, a minute. Was that mushrooms? What was that? Was that... <laughs> That's a yeah, long time ago. Time, but you man. know what? We... A, a really good time, you know, and a lot of good times over the years with MMA weekly and, and this sport has grown so much. And I, I always like to think and wonder, people who aren't with us anymore, what would Ryan Bennett think of where the UFC is now? How would he be handling and doing everything he did to contribute to the sport? And that's a good question because things change, times evolve. I mean, if Ryan Bennett were to see the headline, Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley, I mean, think about that. None of us ever thought we'd see a day where something like this would happen. And we have a guy who's a Vine-turned-YouTube star, and as he likes to call himself, a Disney actor, in Jake Paul, and another one in Logan Paul, who somehow talked their way. And I have an interview ready to drop on MMA Weekly this week with Captain Eric Albatacine, who's been training at times throughout the past couple of years with Logan Paul and with Jake Paul, with Paulo Costa and some of his other fighters, mm -hmm. calling for the Pitbull brothers and the Paul brothers to unite, by the way. He said everybody's dissing the Paul brothers. He wants to unite the Pitbull brothers and the Paul brothers, and you'll see that interview here on MMA Weekly. But, man, Jake Paul, I give him credit, Jeff. I thought he did not want any of Tyron Woodley. I thought, you know, when Woodley was calling him out, I thought Jake Paul didn't want that smoke. I thought he was going to duck him. I never thought Jake Paul would take the Tyron Woodley fight. So for you, Jake Paul, I give you props. But I also wonder, I also wonder, you know, if the elevator's going all the way to the top. Because Tyron Woodley, Jeff Kane, is not anywhere near and would never be confused for Ben Askren on the feet. Tyron Woodley can actually really throw hands. This is a big step up in competition for Jake Paul. Huge. Yeah, it's a, it's a big step up in competition. I imagine that Showtime ha had a lot to do with it. You, you know, uh, Woodley has a serviceable name. Uh, he's a former champion, former UFC champion, uh, but he's also 39 years old, uh, probably is retired from mixed martial arts and, and off a four fight losing streak. So, you know, it's like, hey, we're going to pick somebody who has name value but poses, you know, as little of a threat as as, as possible. Uh, but Woodley, Woodley poses a big threat, man. I mean, you know, Woodley is not, it's like you mentioned, he's not Jake Paul. He, he He's not uh, Nate Robinson. You know, he's not a other another YouTube star. 
Uh, he's he's a guy who's got knockout power in both hands, got uh, speed in both hands, and um, you, you know, it's quite quite a bit better boxer than than Ben Askren. You know, I don't, you know, I, I, props to props to Woodley though. You know, Woodley fought out his UFC contract for opportunities yeah. like this. Uh, you, you know, uh, he's he able did. to cash in. He's probably going to make more in this fight than he did for any more than he'd made in any of his UFC fights. And so pr- props to him for being able to to capitalize on this because at the end of the day for for Woodley, this is basically just a glorified sparring session, right? You know, this is this is just uh, in my mind, this is an easy paycheck, win or lose. And I look at it, Jeff, and I go, wow, look what Woodley did to Darren Till. Look what Woodley did to Robbie Lawler. Look what Woodley did to Wonderboy. Dropped him, too, lest we forget. Those are three big-time strikers who have been dropped on the feet. And I mean dropped by Tyron Woodley. And I, and I look at him as, as a like I said, a big step up over Ben Askren. But crazy enough, everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid, man. Jake Paul is the fucking favorite. In this fight, Jeff, Jake Paul at minus 130, the early odds. Tyron Woodley at minus 110. Woodley's loss, think about this, to Kamara Usman, to Colby Covington, to Gilbert Burns, and to Vicente Luque. Those are four of the baddest men on the planet right there. Luque is really a stud, right? So when you look at what's going on here and you look at what Tyron Woodley had happen at the end of his USA UFC career, those are all three of the top guys in the sport. And then Luque is right there on the outside looking in, knocking on that door. So he lost to the best fighters in the world in his weight class. His contract's up. I actually left him a message this morning. We've gotten along pretty well over the years. And, you know, I just wanted to congratulate him. And I also wanted to try to get him on the show today, maybe get an interview with him this week, Jeff. But Tyron Woodley is a guy who had a lot to say about Jake Paul and to Jake Paul throughout the process leading up to the Ben Askren fight immediately after. And look at Woodley there. Look, this is not a knock on on Ben Askren. And I, I always sound like I'm ripping on Ben. And I've said Ben's loss was a disgrace for all of us, and I overreact sometimes. But it is. It's a black mark on the sport. And I'm sick of boxers, quote-unquote, calling out MMA fighters. I'm sick of Oscar De La Hoya saying, I want to fight GSP. But it has to be boxing. Fuck you. Get in a cage with them. You want to prove you're a bigger man? If you're a boxer, the MMA fighters are too tough for their own good. They're going to say no. They're, I mean, they're going to say yes. They're going to take the fights. You know, and if, and if real boxers are fighting real MMA fighters, most of the time, real boxers are going to win. If real boxers are fighting MMA fighters in a cage, real boxers are not going to win. But I just don't like seeing MMA fighters get called out like this and say, hey, I'm going to go box this guy. The paydays are great, but but something's got to happen here because Dana's not going to let the active fighters do it. And then you have guys like Woodley coming right off contracts, getting a fight that Kamaru Usman can't take right now and that George St. Pierre with Oscar De La Hoya can't take right now and we've had this talk with the contracts jeff but when i look at fights like this they're not fair even if even if tyron woodley wins and i believe he will calling guys out to box when you know they're mma fighters and you're a boxer and then calling yourself tougher as a result it just doesn't it it doesn't compute it's just like you said it's an easy payday for tyron woodley either way it was an easy payday for ben Askren either way i'll take that shot a thousand times for the money ben just made you just stand. I'll stand here, Jeff, and let you knock me out right now for that money. And I don't care who it. I'll let my. Well, I probably won't let Mike Tyson do it. I might not ever be the same. But the point is, man, like the money's there. I I don't know who to rip. I want to rip everyone, but then I don't want to rip anyone. And and I just think the whole thing is so set up for our sport to look bad. And I guess I can't get my ego out of the way enough, and the fighters can't get their egos out of the way enough to to stop it because. It really, to me, is a black mark on the sport that Ben Askren lost. And, and I, I really, I'm envious of you because you don't see it that way. I'm bitter, man. I'm like the dude that got stood up on a date. I'm pissed off still that Ben Askren lost. It doesn't sit well with me. Well, I, I mean, I think that Jake Paul is, um, I mean, it's, it's one of the only times my view and Kobe Covington's merged together. Uh, I, I, I think he's a joke. I, I don't think he's a real fighter. Uh, he hasn't even after the Woodley fight. He still have he still ha, will have never fought a professional boxer, you know. But he calls himself a professional boxer. Look, um, you know, I've got mixed emotions on it. I mean, I'm I'm happy for Woodley that he's able to get this payday uh, after the long career that he's had. Man, he deserves this payday, and, and, and he's going to get to retire. It, it, you know, he's going to get to provide for his family. He's going to get to do things that that honestly he should have been able to do a long time ago. Um, and, and you see other people doing it. You see Misha Tate. I mean, Misha Tate's coming back to the UFC, not because she really cares to fight. It's because she has to get out from underneath that contract. You, you, yeah. you know, you, you can't retire from the UFC. You, you, you either never fight again or you go in there in a mismatch when you shouldn't be in there and take losses. 
uh, just to get out of the contracts. And, and that's what you're going to see out of Misha Tate. Uh, and and that's, that might have been what happened to Woodley in his last fight. You know, Woodley might might have not even gave a damn about that fight. He just wanted to get it over with to get out from underneath the, the UFC's thumb, so, so to speak. And now I agree. Yeah, with you, well, he was disrespected, man. He was disrespected for years <laughs> by the UFC. He's never been a favorite of Dana's. He's a legendary, all-time great UFC champion who has been, I don't want to say shit on, that's strong, but Tyron Woodley has not been treated with anywhere near the respect that other champions have been treated with. And I'm not here to talk about the reasons why. I don't fucking know the reasons why. I just know for a guy that great who's done the things that he did, he knocked out the knockout artist in Robbie Lawler. He outstyled and outpointed the kickboxer in Wonderboy, even dropped him a couple times in that first one, almost finished him. He totally outclassed Damian Maya, stuffing takedown after takedown after takedown after takedown. He smashed the shit out of Darren Till. That one surprised me. He smashed the shit out of an emerging Darren Till, who was literally right there, and everybody's thinking Darren Till is going to be the next champ. Tyron Woodley has huge wins over some of the biggest fighters in the world on the feet. I mean, think about Wonder Boy. Think about these guys who he's fought, Robbie Lawler. Are they boxers? No. But I would say when Jake Paul gets into the ring with Tyron Woodley, he's going to feel something a lot different than what he felt with Ben Askren. Ben didn't even touch him. You know Tyron's at least going to touch him. And I'm waiting for the day, Jeff Kane. I'm waiting for the day. And it's coming, I believe, in this fight when Jake Paul gets chin-checked. Because it's one thing to hit someone. And I give him credit, Nate Robinson you know, and, and uh, Ben Askren. I give him credit. It's one thing to knock someone out. But it's another thing to take a big shot in a fight and still keep competing. That's something that we haven't seen Jake Paul do yet. And the first time that happens is the biggest test he's going to see inside the squared circle. Well, I mean, what, what I want to see, and I think we're going to see it in this boxing match coming up, is somebody to approach the fight like a boxer, right? I mean, Jake Paul's, oh, I mean, first of all, boxing's a one-dimensional sport, and he's a one-dimensional bo boxer in that. He's a headhunter. Woodley needs to go to the body and, and approach this like a boxing match and just cut this dude down in the first round with body shots because he sure as the hell not used to that. Everybody he fights are headhunters. They go straight for just, you know, head punches. Uh, they, they aren't mixing in combinations. Woodley's going to do that. Hit this dude with a liver shot and watch what the hell happens. That's what yes, I want to see. Yes, a liver shot. Yes. <laughs> you know, that, that, that's what I want to see. And he's approaching the MMA guys. You know, you got to be careful uh, because, yeah, man, you can sit here and cherry pick MMA guys and beat them all day in a, in a boxing ring. And they're going to accept the fight for the money. And, and you know, and everybody's going to be happy all the way around. But you're going to eventually run into that guy who is not a washed up guy who, who understands the boxing game. And, 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 and they're going to take a beating because of it. Or, or worst case scenario, you're going to keep trying to call out MMA fighters and, and, and you know, talking all that shit, man. That video with uh, Jake Paul's, I don't, I don't know, the guy was a professional boxer. I, I don't know who he is. And he keeps telling Woodley, you don't know anything about the, these. Woodley should have double-legged that guy and beat the piss out of him right there in the locker room. Right there in the fucking locker talking. room. Right there in the fucking right locker there. room. Right there. Exactly. I mean, not right even there, hesitation. Man. Yeah, if you're going to let your mouth talk that amount of shit, then 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 step into a real game. Yeah, you know, bo boxing's a game. <laughs> you know, mixed martial arts is a yep. fight, and, and 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 that's the truth of the matter, man. I can I can survive a long time in a boxing match. I cannot survive yep. thirty seconds in an MMA fight. Uh, and, and, no, and look, and I don't uh, like right. comparing the sports. You know, I don't like comparing the sports. They are two totally different sports. But right mm -hmm. now, we have all these mediocre boxers at best calling out legendary MMA guys and the MMA people are biting on it, right? Well, Woodley's the first one that's legendary, but you know, you got Chuck Liddell calling out people. Uh, and I don't want to see Chuck fight. You know, that, that's just another. Oh, good Lord, Chuck. Stop, man. Yeah. Stop it, Chuck. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, Chuck Liddell should have been in a right? wheelchair in that Tito Ortiz fight. <laughs> he was so slow and he couldn't move. I saw him try to walk out from the corner on those knees and I'm like, shit, man. Like I understand the payday. Although from what I'm, what I'm getting, you know, Chuck and Tito didn't make much money, and Oscar couldn't even pronounce their damn. Oscar De, De La Hoya is a disgrace to promoting. He couldn't even say he's like Chuck Lydell. You know, go put the fishnets back on, dude. I used to really look up to and admire Oscar De La Hoya, and not for nothing. You know what? Some girls who I've been with in my lifetime, they're so damn hot. If they'd have told me to put on heels and fishnets, fuck, I probably would have done it too. So I, I, I'm taking shots at Oscar for that. But legitimately one of the greatest fighters of all time, legitimately one of the biggest stars in the history of the sport, and I just hate seeing guys like Chuck, guys like Oscar. GSP looks really ripped, man. If you saw the picture of him after cutting out processed foods for a couple of weeks, GSP <laughs> is ripped. It's on his social media. But, Jeff, at the end of the day, man, I really think that 
I'm, I'm a lot, I'm a lot, how do I say it? I'm a lot cooler with Woodley getting in there against Jake Paul than I am GSP and Oscar, than I am Tyson and Roy Jones, than I am Holyfield and anyone. I've been very outspoken about this. Look at Chuck Liddell, man. I mean, look, that's some, that's some rare footage right there. Holy shit, <laughs> man. But I'll, I'll tell you what, Jeff Kane, these old guys fighting to come back and get a payday, there's got to be something else they can do to make money then get back in there at 50 plus years old and risk the things they're risking. I, I was legitimately concerned for Chuck's life in there against Tito. And that's Tito. Imagine uh, if it was anybody else, because Tito's pretty washed up too. Well, uh, yeah, that, that fight should have never happened. You know, first, I mean, T Tito waited till Chuck was in, in an old folks home and he finally got, got the win over him. Uh, oh, look at Matt Hughes. I think, Damn. I don't think anybody that Matt Hughes? considers that legit. Yeah, that was Matt Hughes. Um, MMA you know, like, like I said, right I, don't mind, I, I don't mind uh, the guys going over and cashing in. I, I, I really don't. Uh, in GSP, they better watch out because GSP is not one of these guys that's been sitting on the couch. You, you know, GSP is just not a mixed martial artist anymore. Oh. He, he, he's smart enough to realize that he can't compete on the highest level of mixed martial arts. He can still go box somebody, though. And GSP had an epic jab. <laughs> you know, I mean, he changed the way the jab was used in mixed martial arts. Um and so you know you might bite off more than you can chew with with uh, with GSP, but not if you're Oscar De, De La Hoya. You, you know what I mean? I mean we, we can we can bag on Oscar, and, and Oscar's definitely got some personal problems going on right now, and hopefully the people around him recognize that. Yeah, shit. the move him, move him out of a public uh, you know position and and get that guy the help that he needs. But he's a legend, you know. To, to think that Oscar De La Hoya, or that GSP could outbox Oscar De La Hoya even at this point in their lives. I, I don't buy into that. I, I just don't buy into that. Now, would GSP beat the shit out of Jake Paul? Yep. <laughs> and not need a takedown to do so. Uh, and, but so you got to be careful what they're doing right here. But but GSP will take that big payday. Of course he will. Uh, Woodley's going to take this big payday. And then and then we'll see who's next that's going to take the big payday. I think that you're seeing fighters jockeying for these paydays because they're easier fights, right? If I could fight one boxing match against Jake Paul and cash in $5 million, then that's a career in mixed martial arts, you know, that that's your earnings for a career. And so I understand why they do it. You, you know, hell I do it too. Um, and, and, you know, it speaks to bigger things like fighter pay and, 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 you know, the combat sports all together and in sports entertainment, it, it's, we've just gotten off the rails man. uh, but you can cash in. I hope Woodley goes to the body. I hope Woodley approaches this as a boxer and not a headhunter. Cause I, that's, that's why they pick the mix, the, the, the mixed martial artists because they're not boxers. They're not technical boxers. They're headhunters when it comes to their striking, or they use their jab to set up a takedown, you, you, you know, or to set up a high kick. You know, it's 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 different. It's different striking than boxing, where you just plant your feet, bite on the mouthpiece, and, and start throwing punches. Uh, and then I know it's more technical than that. You know, that's not. I, I, this is why I don't like talking about it, Jim, because I, I sound like I'm dogging boxing, and I'm not. I love boxing, love boxing, but it's just not mixed martial arts. It's just not. Um, and. So we're going to have all these boxing matches because MMA fighters are going to be willing to do it because there's no risk in it. You got big pillow hands hitting you in the head. Uh, that's not nearly as dangerous as, as you know, uh, Uriah Hall throwing freaking head kicks at you, <laughs> you know? And so I think you're going to see a lot of fighters take right. this route. And, and, I don't, and I don't blame them. You know, I, I really don't blame them. It's safer. Uh, and now, I think mixed martial arts overall is safer than boxing. But when you're talking about high level athletes, it's surely it's safer to box than it is to to, uh, to fight mixed martial arts. Just the training aspect of it. You know, you don't have to train kicks to the body. You don't got to train flying knees. You don't got to train elbows. You don't got to train getting mounted. You just got to train your hands uh, and footwork. And, and I think that they're going to get somebody over there. Woodley might be it, man. And I hope Woodley is. Who, who's who's going to face plant Paul? I don't. I don't know. If this Chop is, him down, you know, though, Jeff. You're right. Body shots. It's it's not always about the chin. You know. That's a, that's a mistake a lot of young fighters make. You go for a knockout at the wrong time or you get a little over overzealous, rambunctious in there. You know, you, you shoot your whole load and then you're done. I love the notion of, of thinking about it from a boxing standpoint, pragmatically. What do you do against a guy without that high level experience? You chop him down, man. You chop. And I box all the time. And I'll, I trust me when I tell you, yeah, you get knocked out when you get hit in the temple. You get knocked. I've, I've been hit pretty fucking hard in my in my chin in the temple as I'm training. And it's nothing compared to what these guys take. And that's with boxing gloves. And it fucking hurts. Make no mistake about it. Yeah. It hurts <laughs> when you get hit with those pillows. It does. But it hurts a lot more when you get hit with the hands with no pillows. But I, I'll say this, man. 
Nobody likes body shots. Body shots are the worst thing in the world. They're uncomfortable. They're nasty. They hurt like a motherfucker. They add up throughout the fight. They rob you of your wind. They rob you of, of your your will to compete at some point if you get hit enough times in the body. And, and you know, it's not like leg kicks or anything like that. But those those kidney shots and, and those little, like, the, even just in the clench when you come in and just just little shots that don't look like much. <laughs> They add up throughout the fight, and and real quick while we're on the um, while we're, uh, I just I sent uh, a couple of uh, photos to our guys producing the show. There's a photo that I sent in the email of GSP from Instagram. I want I want I want everybody to see what GSP looks like if we can throw that photo up. He, yeah, because yeah, GSP is absolutely food. shredded at 40 years old. So if we can see that, we got that. We'll we'll have that one. I think in a minute. I emailed that and also emailed Jake Paul's Instagram post, which is a response or his response to the announcement about Tyron Woodley. So I'll save that for you guys. You can see it in a minute. But when I looked at GSP, man, he's the ultimate competitor. He's the ultimate champion. And, you know, he makes 40 look young, Jeff. He makes 40 look damn young. Yeah, he's a guy who's taking care of himself. You know, he, he eats right. He, he works out every single day. He's, he's not um, – I mean, I've seen GSP drink and stuff after fights and whatever when he's not committed to – but he's not a big partier, you know. He's a person who's taking care of himself. And honestly, he hasn't taken a lot of damage. You, you know, the, the Sarah fight, the, the Johnny Hendricks fight, and, uh, you, you know, but I don't think for the majority of his career, he didn't take a lot of damage. And so GSP's looking good, man. I, you know, I wish I looked that way at 29, man, and that guy's 40. He, he, looks, he looks phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, GSP's a different type of animal. You, you know, he, he's, he's, a, he's just a fitness guy who, who takes care of his body, and, and that's, that's who he is. That, that's what he does. Um, but, it, but th th that makes him special, you know, that makes him kind of an anomaly because even the highest level athletes don't there get he is. In that shape. I mean, look at that. Look shape. at him. Look, look at I him, mean, Jeff. God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his striations have striations and I'm sorry for the bad crop job guys. That's me. That's not our production team. I messed that yeah, one up. You see the right side of that photo. Um, but man, Jeff, if nobody's looking at anything, but this dude, look at him, there is one of the most, and I'd say the second biggest. I don't want to say the second biggest name in UFC history, but I would say the second, maybe third greatest champion of all time because you got to go Jones and Anderson Silva and GSP. And whatever order you want to put them in, I'm not going to really argue too much with you. I always have jo Jones one. I, I like Silva two and GSP three. But either way, man, to be in that kind of shape at 40, he still has a UFC fight on his contract. I would love to see him fight Khabib this year. That's not going to happen. Um, there's no doubt that Khabib is, is, I mean, for the most part, there's no doubt that Khabib is going to stay retired. But you know what's funny is I was hanging out over the weekend, and and thank you, Captain Eric Albatacin and Henry Cejudo and, you know, T-City, Brian Ortega, Tracy Cortez, Bruno the Bulldog, Leandro Higo. Had a great weekend with those guys doing interviews, hanging out with them to celebrate Higo's win and Bruno Bulldog's win. And, you know, as I'm talking to these guys about all these fights coming up, they're like, that's the one guy, man. And Henry Cejudo and I were talking. That's the one guy who could almost draw anybody out because there's so much love and so much respect for GSP. If there's anyone Khabib would fight, it would be him. But GSP just commands so much respect, and, and he's literally idolized by this whole generation of fighters who grew up watching him, and many of the fighters in the UFC are there today because of that man right there, George St. Pierre. Yeah, George could draw some big names out. Yeah, I mean – and, you know, I get the feeling George wants to fulfill that one fight contract, right? He, he wants to get that fight out of his way so he could go. Now he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that they all do. I mean, I really do. I think that they would Misha Tate wasn't allowed to uh, grapple Cyborg in submission underground. I, I feel like that's why she's coming back is to get that fight off there. Um, and yeah. so, so she can kind of be open to that. Because, look, Misha can make – well, I mean, this is a brutal sport, man. You can't compete on the highest level, and, and you know when you can Misha knows that right. you can't. But, but, but if but you're Dana, also, what do you say? I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't mean. Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I would like to think that they could come to an agreement because I, if I can't compete against the highest guys, you shouldn't put, or, or women, you shouldn't put me in there. You know, you owe me that much. And, and so what I don't like about the UFC's contracts is you can never retire. You know, GSP isn't wanting to fight. <laughs> you know, he doesn't want to fight uh, Usman. But if GSP comes back with his name, who the hell does he have to fight? He has to fight an Usman, right? He has to fight an Israel Adesanya. He has to fight a Khabib. And, and, and you know, and I, I don't think GSP wants to do that. I, I don't think that he's prepared to do that at his age. I don't think he has any interest in that. But he's going to have to fight 
in order to be able to get from underneath that contract. And that's the part that I don't like. You, you know, I'm like, man, he, the guy can't compete at the highest level. He's not mm -hmm. wanting to go to one FC. He's not wanting to go to Bellator. He, no. You know, th that, this isn't one of those situations. Oh, although he never deal. said he wouldn't. You never no, say, I never, mean, you well, never know. You can, you can hold that. Yeah, you can hold that over his head on the non, because that is non-compete, right? I mean, you can't be. But I, I would never. Know, he, would you pay to watch GSP and in, in Oscar? I wouldn't. I would watch it if it was on, but I wouldn't pay for it. No, uh, no, I, I wouldn't pay for it. Not, not at all. I, I wouldn't at all. They'd, they'd be sending me one of those cease and desist orders. Uh, I would. I'd probably watch it. But there's no way I'm spending a penny on the thing. Uh, well, wait a minute. You're part owner, so if the UFC is part promoter, you should get it for free. You should start using that clout you have now. Well, I was, yeah, I was, yeah, Oscar De La Hoya. So I'm, I'm doing this shit under Golden Boy or Triller or, or whatever. Uh, it's not, it's not the UFC, you, you know. Um, no, but if know, the UFC co promotes, I mean, you could. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Like they the did the Gregor fight. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them co promoting anybody. They could with GSP, you, you know, they could, it, and even Khabib, they could co promote. Uh, because Khabib's starting his own promotion, and I don't think no, that he's going to I, I don't want to see Kamaru. I mean, everybody who's saying, I want to see GSP come back to fight Kamaru to see who the GOAT is, 40-year-old GSP fighting Kamaru in his prime is not to see not who the fair. GOAT is. G it's not, it's not, I don't, I'm not, I would never count George out, but that would not be to see who the better champion and the better fighter is. A lot of fans would like to see that. I think GSP would get mangled by Kamaru Usman, and I think 99% of the people on the planet right now would get mangled by Kamaru Usman. You know, as I look at Oscar De La Hoya there, and I sound like I'm denigrating him, but, you know, Jeff, you have that all-time classic, and you're like, hey, Snoop, back to you, A.C. Slater. That's what Triller <laughs> is. And, you know, there's Oscar. Um, we talked about him being smashed on the dais with those guys, you know, and uh, they literally completely destroyed yeah. what was left of Al Bernstein's reputation. But, you know, when you look at, at Snoop, and Mario Lopez and all these things that they have, it's a circus show. But I, I'm with you, man. I don't want to deny Oscar De La Hoya the opportunity to make some of the money that he so badly needs after his disastrous career as a promoter. You know, so I would like to see Oscar do well. One of the highlights of my boxing career was interviewing Oscar twice. And, um, you know, the first time I had my sweats on and he was all pimped out in his suit. And I told him, next time I'll be ready for you. And the next time I had my game stepped up and I matched his clothes and he goes, yeah, homeboy, but do you got these? And he throws on glasses. And I'm like, man, you got to be the golden boy. He is the golden boy. Make no mistake about it. Oscar De La Hoya is a big draw. If he fought GSP, maybe it does 800,000 buys. Maybe it does a million and a half buys. Who the hell knows? Because yeah. of all the Canadians and then Oscar's fan base. That's the thing about boxing, Jeff. I believe that the boxing fan base, when you have rabid fans of a particular fighter, there are more rabid fans of those fighters. And people like to say, like Richard Schaefer just got hired by John Jones to negotiate his deal. He's Golden Boy's guy who negotiated those deals. He said specifically about that deal with Dana White and John Jones, the goal is not to make a deal that everybody's happy with. The goal is to make a deal that everybody can live with. And those are the deals that are being made right now. But it's opening doors for athletes who are so far past their primes to come back and make some money, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's hard for me as a guy at 49 years old to knock people who are taking that opportunity because I'm selfish and I want to remember them the way they were. Nobody <laughs> wants to remember Emmett Smith in the Cardinals uniform. Nobody wants to remember Brett Favre for the Jets and Vikings. You know, you want to remember them in their heyday, in their glory days. But the cold, hard reality is, Jeff Kane, there aren't many people like Khabib. Even Jordan came back and played with the Wizards. There are very few people who walk away on top at their peak as they're getting better and they're still undefeated. Mm -hmm. Khabib is a unicorn in that regard. Very, very rarely do you see an athlete, especially a superstar athlete, go out on his or her own terms. It never ends well. It, ne it always ends like Anderson Silva. It always ends like that for the most part mm -hmm. with these athletes. And I just don't want to see that. I don't want to remember Chuck Liddell for the way he limped out for Chuck Tito 3. That wasn't Chuck Tito 3. Chuck and Tito <laughs> ended at Chuck and Tito 2, the real Chuck and Tito. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm rambling about this, but it, it does. It gets to be too much to me at a certain point. I'm, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm warming up to a Woodley versus Jake Paul. <laughs> hey, Woodley fought his UFC contract out. Jake Paul wants to fight Woodley and there's a big money deal. Cool, go make your money. I'm all for that fight. I think if Jake Paul can get it, more power to him. If Logan Paul can get it, more power to him. And, and talking to Captain Eric, I'll bought a scene over the weekend. The captain, Henry's coach, and Paulo's coach, and the Pitbull brothers, and Hego, and all these guys, uh, the Korean zombie, 
he said to me, man, he goes, we trained with Logan Paul in Vegas. And I remember that night because I met Logan Paul with Paulo Costa and Captain Eric. I believe it was UFC 239 after the fights, whatever, in Vegas. And my daughter was literally, you man, Logan, Logan Paul, <laughs> Logan Paul. And she's 14 now. But these guys are huge stars. They draw enormous numbers. Logan Paul's fight, are you ready for this, Jeff Kane? I'm going to say it right now. It's this week. We'll be live during that fight here in MMA Weekly. Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather may break every pay-per-view record. That's right. I said it. They might break Mayweather's record against McGregor because you're taking all the Floyd people coming in, and then you're taking the tens of millions of followers that these dudes have on social media. Jake Paul's fucking brilliant. If we could throw up that picture that I had of Jake Paul that I emailed to you guys, Jake Paul's response to the fight being booked against Woodley, his Instagram handle is gotcha hat. I mean, do you know how much fucking money he just made by snatching Floyd Mayweather's hat and, and putting up merchandise that says gotcha hat? These guys know how to make money. They know how to convert on their fan base. And it's huge. Jeff, this fight might actually break every record that we've ever seen in pay-per-view. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I hadn't really thought about the numbers that this fight. There's Jake's be. response. I mean, I guess. We I guess pull that down a little bit. We pull that. Oh, wait. Or is it the bottom? Which one is it that has what he said? I think it's cropped. Did no, I crop out what he said? Oh, there it is. The top. There it is. Go ahead, Jeff. You want to read that? Can you see it? What is he saying? He says, thanks for being the second MMA fighter on my hit list. What the hell? The five-time UFC champion is getting knocked out by a Disney out. actor. Huh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Thank okay. you, Jake I mean, Paul. May maybe. Well, like I said, when you watch, it, and I have, because I get pissed off about, about this stuff, Jake Paul overcommits on his punches. He's a headhunter, and any disciplined striker is going to take his body away from him and end him in one round. Um, that that that's the way that's going to go. Uh, but Jake Paul keeps picking fighters that don't understand boxing, don't understand striking, and some would argue Ben Askren doesn't really understand how to throw a proper punch. Uh, Woodley, nobody's going to say that about you know. And so so yeah, I'll give I'll give Showtime and them props for that that they did find a 39-year-old guy on four losses that has a reputation, at least, for ending fights uh, whenever he was in his prime. Uh, and he is a former UFC champion. This isn't a 1FC champion. This isn't a World Series of Fighting champion. This, this, is, this is the world champion, 170-pound champion, you know, the baddest guy on the planet at that weight for, for a long time. Uh, it's also been a long time since he's been there. Um, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. For me to picture Jake Paul knocking out Tyron Woodley, I, 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 I can't wrap my head around that right now. But, but how about this? You know what? I can't wrap my fucking head around it. I got a big cabeza grande here, Jeff Kane. I'll tell you this: I can't wrap my head around the fact that Jake Paul's in the front on the poster. He's <laughs> Jake Paul's name is above Tyron Woodley's on the marquee. He's a bigger draw by far. Tyron Woodley is being paid basically by Jake Paul, even though that's not the way the arrangement's made. It's basically because of Jake Paul. So that's the interesting part, that the athlete is secondary here. The big-time athlete, the five-time UFC champ, is below the YouTube star slash Disney actor, as he likes to say, on the marquee. And on top of all that, Jake Paul's favorite. Who the fuck is doing the odds for this fight, Jeff? How in the world would you ever favor Jake Paul over Tyron Woodley. They, they're doing it for a reason. They want the money to start coming in on Woodley, and then it's going to move. I mean, you know how the bookmakers are, but he's favored. He's favored over Tyron Woodley, a five-time UFC champ. So because of the Ben Askren fight, people are thinking, wow, Jake Paul can really box. These UFC fighters can't box. Tyron Woodley's in trouble. Jake Paul's going to keep beating up these UFC fighters. But if Tyron Woodley comes out and works the body and displays patience and eventually chops down the tree, I don't see any way... Jake Paul can hang with him, but I, I just want to finish with this, this point anyway. I have all the respect in the world for Jake Paul. He's trying to be a legitimate fighter, and he's he's got a $10 million plus deal from Showtime with a lot of plus side on that as well to go way higher. He's made himself into a boxer who people want to watch. He actually looks like a boxer. He's decent skill-wise. Maybe he can get better and better and fight a couple of real boxers and do reasonably well. I don't know, but I will say this. If Tyron Woodley loses this fight, and I've said it about Ben Askren, but especially Tyron Woodley, and I, I, I don't know how else to say it, man. What a black eye. What a, 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 just a, a disgrace and an embarrassment 
for our sport. I hate to say it, but that's what this is becoming. It's an embarrassment. If Woodley loses, it's an embarrassment. So if Woodley and Jake Paul get into a fight on the sidewalk, who wins? Woodley, 100 times out of 100. Yeah, I mean, so I don't consider it a black guy. Everybody knows. You know, look, this Jake Paul. Do you think everybody knows? Well, Are you I don't overestimating know the overall no. intelligence level out there. No, no, I, I 100% think that I'm overestimating the intelligence level. Look, we're we're in a weird period <laughs> where we celebrate me- mediocrity, right? We do. We everybody, we look, we, what's we a, celebrate meet the parents, right? I mean, we, I didn't we, know they we, gave we seventh could. place trophies, Greg. <laughs> well, it's not. I mean, we celebrate mediocrity even more than that. You know, you know. I mean, we'd rather watch Jake Paul, a fucking YouTube guy, a Disney princess, go out here and box rather than watch high-level boxers. You've got high-level boxers who can't get a damn paycheck, uh, can't get fights, can't get a crowd, and but you got this YouTube guy doing it. You know, you, you've got, we're in a weird time where some motherfucker in a, in a truck on YouTube is all of a sudden as credible as a PhD, you know, as a guy who's yeah. an expert in the field. We're just in a weird yep. time where we celebrate mediocrity. And I have a theory on that. Because we're all fucking mediocre, right? And so we need the Jake Pauls in the world to give us hope that, oh, my God, I'm not just an underachieving dude from Kentucky. I could actually be <laughs> Jake Paul. That, that's, that's why I think it happens. Wait, how are you I'm underachieving, really... man? You're the editor of MMA Weekly. You've got almost 20 years under your belt here. You're well, because a legend I'm not Jake in the Paul. sport. Yeah, because I'm not <laughs> fighting on freaking Showtime. Oh, my God. Uh, you Look, know what? And Captain Eric said this to me, Jeff. He said Logan Paul was talking to him about fighting the biggest name, and they were looking at him like he's crazy. And like, oh, who do you want to fight? Like, you know, a lower level fight. He's no, I want to fight the biggest fighters who ever lived. These kids legitimately want to fight the biggest fighters who have ever lived. You have to give him credit for that. You have to. There's nothing mediocre at all about Jake and Logan Paul, except maybe their boxing skills that will be exposed <laughs> against the right opponent or the wrong. But I, I really do. I got nothing but respect. They're able to make this happen and work their way in. They're they're showing every fighter like Conor McGregor has how to make money, man. It is an individual sport. The mold has been broken. It's a matter of time. And Lorenzo and Frank saw the writing on the wall, and they also saw $4.2 billion in their face, which is now worth $10 billion. But there's going to be that regulation, the Muhammad Ali Act. There's all that monopoly talk. There's all this fighter pay. The days of them holding fighter pay down is is coming they're coming to an end they absolutely are now is it is it rising quickly enough for most people no but ufc fighters and i've seen it a couple a couple things here in the chat the ufc doesn't pay woodley's going to make more in this fight than maybe who knows maybe his last three or four ufc fights on his deal because he's fighting jake paul think about that more money is to be made a lot more money is to be made in these fights for the fighters than actual ufc fights you don't have to get kicked. You don't have to worry about takedowns. You don't have to worry about elbows, knees, any of that stuff. And you're getting the biggest payday you've ever seen. And I, and I see that in here. And I want to I want to get to some of the, the comments real quick, Jeff, and get your thoughts on these. The first one of the show, Joyce Neville. Woodley should win this as long as he doesn't just look for his right hand to land. At least Jake is stepping up to someone who can punch now. He can do a lot more than punch. Uh, JD.C says, what if Woodley gets chinned with a crying face? RIP Tyron if he loses. Tyron's been chinny lately, so I don't know, guys. That's true. And what's up, Jaden? Appreciate you there. T. Wood will KO Jake Paul in one round. Uh, Woodley is a slow starter, so I think it'll probably last two rounds with Woodley knocking him out. If Jake fights and beats Tyron Woodley, it's Tyron, not Tyrone, guys. Then and only then will I give him his props. Uh, Let's see. Uh, He is still ducking Tommy Fury, Jim. Let's see. Uh, Just fight real boxers so you can get the respect. We've got some really good comments in here. Um, don't take Floyd's hat. Tyron is too muscular and will will gas. Old heads are hating on Jake. Jake getting paid to take the L. Is it going to be a boxing match or MMA? It's going to be a boxing match, unfortunately. And Hawker Mustang says, and this is great, it's not about who is the best. It's about who is more popular. And the problem child, Jake Paul, is extremely popular. His, his fan base is exploding. The chosen one, Tyron Woodley. I don't know, man. I'm actually feeling myself getting a little fired up for this fight. I want to see Tyron Woodley knock his head off, though. I have to tell you, I really want to see Woodley knock his head off and then maybe call out his brother and make another five, man. That'd be great. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's that's what all, uh, you know, MMA fans are going to hope 
I, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't care one one way or another because uh, you know if if Jake Paul comes out here and sleeps Tyron Woodley in the first damn exchange, you know, and this is an eight second mm-hmm. fight, I don't even care. Like I don't think that makes us look bad, you, you know. I mean, you start taking out Israel Adesanya, you, you know, you start taking out uh, Francis Ngannou, you know, you start taking out Kamaru Usman. Then, then we could talk about that. And, and to get back to what Colby was saying uh, over the weekend, he, he, or did last week, he did all these interviews. Uh, Colby, you know, le, le, leave it, leave it to the guys that aren't aren't washed up and past their prime. You know, look, if if if, if we're gonna frame this as mixed martial arts versus boxing, and that's what boxing is trying to do, and it's smart, yep. right? You, you, you get you get all these mixed martial arts fans in a frenzy and you get all these boxing fans in a frenzy and what's going to happen is some kid who only knows hands is going to get the shit kicked out of him in some bar because he talks shit to a guy who is not just a boxer anyway i'll I'll digress on that but boxing fans you might want to keep your mouth closed in public around mixed martial artists or you might you might catch the beating of your life um but until you're taking out the top people in the sport you know, until John Jones gets knocked out by, by one of these guys, then, then I don't think it's a comparison. You know, you're taking these guys that are in their 20s, you know, in their athletic prime, and they're going against guys who are out of their athletic prime and aren't even boxers. So they're kind of sitting, uh, stacking the deck double in their favor. You, you, you know, but Woodley does have the capability uh, of, of doing Paul in because Woodley moves, right? Uh, that's that's got to be my knock on Woodley in his last several fights. Is uh, he used to take the fight to people, and now he kind of just—he's okay with moving away from you. I think that's he did at Luke good though. strategy. Yeah, he I think went, he went strategy. at Luke. <laughs> he got that over as quick as possible. Uh, yeah, but he's gonna—he's—he's he's gonna be able to move, and we haven't seen Jake Paul like let's let's see what this dude looks like in the fourth round. <laughs> you know, let's see what he looks like in the fourth round. Just move away from him. Let him chase you around, hit him with some body shots, and then start fighting him later in the fight. Uh, that, that that's what you do to inexperienced fighters. That that's what Mayweather did to McGregor. Uh, and so I feel like you could do that to Jake Paul, but I don't know if Woodley's going to stand there and 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 want to and want to do that. He, he might just go out there and start head up. Who who knows what's going to happen? These fights are crazy. Uh, people are well, interested and, into in them. You know whether whether we consider yep. them legitimate or not. Not don't. Uh, people are interested in them, and so that adds legitimacy a little bit. For perspective, Tyron is a wrestling-based UFC fighter who hasn't won in three years. So if y'all think Jake is brave yep. for this, think again. Uh, much hubby. Yep. I, I don't agree. know if it's much hubby or much chubby, but there he is. Oh, look at that profile pic, too. The cat inside the sock puppet. Oh, that's creativity there. Good job. No, I agree good with, job I agree with what he said. Too. Yeah, I, I think that's a rational way to look at it. Now, I don't think that that's the way boxing's going to frame it, and I don't think that's the way Woodley's going to frame it, you know, because it puts him in a bad light. but. That, I mean, that's the truth of the matter. Woodley is a wrestler who hasn't won a fight in three years, and he's 39 years old, lost four fights in a row, and is not in the UFC anymore. And so to build him up as if he's um, the Tyron Woodley of five years ago, is not. It's, it's just not accurate. It's just absolutely not accurate. But it is a good name. Uh, he, he, he accepted the fight. He's going to get a huge payday. Pro- props to him for that, and props to the Pauls. For, you know, if I'm going to compliment Jake and, and Logan Paul, it's not going to be on the, the stupidity of their fan base thinking that they're worthy of following like they do, but uh, right. or, or that their boxing skills are somehow to be all that. It's the fact that they've created an avenue that, that competes with boxing and mixed martial arts and stone combat sports on its damn head, because what do you do when fighters start taking easier fights for bigger paydays? Uh, now, now there's another outlet, right? There's another pay-per-view outlet in, in, in the, in the sphere. And, and, and you're seeing fighters like trying to fight out their contracts to get into that sphere. Um, and so props to them for that. They've changed the sport. That's the only thing I'm going to compliment them on. I'm not going to compliment them on their, on their sunglasses, their damn hairdos, their clothes, their followers, none of that shit. I, I, I think that they're immature little spoiled rich kids who, who need an ass whipping. Uh, that's what I think of the Paul brothers. But who gives a shit what I make? You know what, what I think. I'm, I'm just some dude, uh, you, you know, t- hoping. There I goes my interview, him. Jake. Don't listen to him, nah, Jake. Well, <laughs> give me the interview, Jake. Give me the interview, Jake. Well, and, I, and you know we'll, what, Jeff? I'll give you my word, man. If I score the interview with Jake Paul, there's no way I'm doing it without you anyway. So we'll, we'll do that one together, well, gonna, man. And I think that. I, I just don't think that they get asked the questions, you know, the legitimate questions. And I don't well, think. You know what the le- 
well, you know what the legitimate question is to me right now? Which one are you more impressed with? Logan Paul getting in there with Floyd at 44 with a 40 to 50 pound weight advantage or Jake getting in there with Tyron Woodley? Which one's more impressive to you? A, that they could talk their, themselves into something like this. And that's obviously Logan Paul fighting the greatest boxer of all time. But which one do you think has a tougher task ahead of him? Jake Paul against Woodley or Logan Paul against Mayweather? Maybe Jake, because uh, Logan's so much bigger than Floyd, man. And Floyd's not a knockout artist to begin with. Um, you know, look, I, I will say this. I'm, I'm not happy with Floyd. You, you, you know, for, for us to do this with Woodley and, and, and you know, and Askren and, and, you know, Nate Robinson and all this shit that goes on, that's one thing. But when you have arguably, you know, one of the greatest boxers of all time who accepts a fight with a Logan Paul, he just handed them legitimacy. And so I don't like Floyd for that. But Floyd's always been, you know, Floyd. Floyd wants to make money, and I get that, Floyd. Do, do, I mean, they don't call him money for nothing. Uh, and, and he's going to make a shit ton of money. I get that. But, but he accepted a fight with the Logan Paul. I mean, it just, it, it's just insane, right? I mean, it's just insane. It's like, I don't even know, I don't even know what that's like. You know, Kamaru Usman fighting Adam Sandler. You, you know, yeah. you can't, you're given legitimacy to, to the Paul brothers. I don't feel like anybody. Well, he did get his ass beat by Bob Barker. <laughs> yeah. The price is wrong, yeah, I don't bitch. think anybody's given. The, yeah. I, I, yeah. But I don't think anybody's given the Pauls legitimacy more than Floyd just did. I mean, Floyd just handed it to him. I mean, at the end of the day, Logan Paul talked his way into a boxing match with the greatest boxer of our generation. That's 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 yep. insane. That's, and he that's, beat his brother to the punch. Work. Literally, he beat Jake to the punch. Yeah, it just that's just not the way sports work. Uh, but it is the way sports work. And so me, as a you know guy in my late forties and, and kind of old school, I, I'm going to have to adjust with this new, with this oh, new world, man. right? This this new kind of reality. Um, and you, you're going to have to adjust with the new reality. It's just so I'll give the Pauls credit for that. They they freaking turned the combat sports world on its freaking head. Yeah, and, and I have a great quote that I want to read from Logan Paul here, Jeff, okay? And, and I can't put it up on my screen, unfortunately. But it's from um, an interview that he did with and, and uh, it's from CBS with Brian Campbell, who I actually like. But um, Logan Paul says, MMA, this quote, MMA was kicking boxing's ass. Logan Paul told CBS Sports during an interview with Showtime cameras this week during training camp. Now everyone is interested in boxing. The model is being replicated time and time again. You got Triller now, you got social gloves, and just the weekend after our fight, there's TikTokers and YouTubers fighting. Jake just got a deal with Showtime. At what fucking point is it legit? Wake up and smell the coffee. We are here, and we are here to stay. Logan Paul, direct quote. What do you think of that? It's, 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 it's Britney Spears fans trying to tell me she's better than a Christina Aguilera. I mean, just, just, just because just because it's popular, just because it's yes. popular doesn't mean it's legit, right? Take I mean, a bow, know, Jeff. I mean, really? Yeah, I mean, it's take a bow, been, man. I, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I agree with what Logan's saying. You know, they're by popular. the way, Christina, Christina, all day in her prime, all day. Just well, Brit Britney doesn't stack up with any of the Mariah Carey or Whitney Houston, any of those actual singers. Well, right? I'm just talking about how was. sexy she was in her videos. That's all I care about. And oh. she, obviously, she's a way better singer. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of videos talking... and speaking of sexy, if you love what you're seeing right now with us two sexy late 40s guys right here on MMA Weekly, and I don't know why I just went there, but Jeff, we're getting close to 600K on YouTube. We're at 599 plus, so smash that subscribe, that like button. Keep coming in the chat. We love you guys. Let's hit 600K right now. Let's hit 600K this week where we have Logan Paul and Mayweather. We're going to be live. Woodley and Jake Paul, by the way, August 28th. You got UFC 263 in Glendale right outside of Phoenix coming up in less than a couple of weeks with Nate Diaz and Leon Edwards' five-round fight as the co co -main. Brandon Moreno, Davison Figueredo, the rematch for the flyweight title, and the main event, Marvin Vittori and Israel Adesanya, a rematch of one of Izzy's toughest fights in the UFC, is the main event. And I'll let you guys know, I'll be outside of the arena all day long doing live content, having a blast, and we'll be doing our show that night. I'll be right outside the arena in Glendale for UFC 263. Right after that, less than four weeks, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, the tree match, the legacy fight, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky himself, saying that the advantage goes to Poirier because he's hungrier and he doesn't have the money that McGregor has. And who the hell knows more about getting too comfortable, losing your edge and getting knocked out than Rocky Balboa? Nobody. <laughs> exactly. 
damn Rocky got soft in there. And he wrote the um, damn movie, so you know, I mean, there you go. Yeah, look, that guy, that guy. Uh, I love Sly Stallone. And he Props held out. You, Look, that Rocky, Rocky one's a great story, right? It's a great story because he just mm-hmm. wasn't going to sell that shit to people, and he held to his guns, and he, and he got what he wanted in the long run, which uh, was to star in the movie. Yep. Yeah, and and it just took off like crazy because he did a good job of pitting the average person against the super athlete. I mean, this isn't a new trend that we're seeing. Like, like I said, we we all kind of want the underdog to win because I think it gives us hope. I mean, I really do. I think it's an uplifting story. When somebody who shouldn't win, who is so overmatched, when David beats Goliath, right? I mean, the story's mm-hmm. thousands of years old, <laughs> you know. And Jake Paul and them have kind of, and and Logan have, have tapped into that, you in, know, in, in a lot of ways. Um, but they're great but, heels, Jeff. They're they're WWE oh. level heels. I mean, they're all time great heels. They are. They know how 100%. it's like Tony Montana. Say good night to the bad guy. You know, I mean, these oh, guys are, yeah, they, are they loving know what it. They're doing. Yeah, yeah. For the whole crowd screaming "fuck Jake Paul" when he walked into. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I've had that. I've had that experience happen once in my lifetime on a much smaller level. And I had when I first moved back to Arizona in 2008. Real quick story. I, I found out where the University of Miami Alumni Club watches our games. That went to the U. Shout out to the U. It's all about the U. And uh, so I found out where we watched the game. Well, I left my license there because, as usual, I would be drunk at a University of Miami game. And they had lost that night. So I left I left my card there when I paid my tab, right? So I go back the next day to get it. It's an upper-level bar that would have about 1,000, 1,500 people there on an NFL Sunday. And unbeknownst to me is a Philadelphia Eagles bar. Well, I walk back in to get my debit card and my license, and all of a sudden I'm wearing my cowboy stuff. I walk in and I hear, boo, asshole, ass. they're screaming, blowing the roof off. And I'm like, shit, they're yelling at me. This is kind of cool. So I, I can I can only imagine Jake Paul walking into a, think about this, walking into a UFC arena, the first fight back with fans, and everybody is screaming, fuck Jake Paul. That's unbelievable. That is an unbelievable job by Jake and Logan Paul to talk yourself into a fight with fucking Money Mayweather. Are you kidding me? He actually did it, and they're going to fight this week. We'll be live for it. I can't wait to see it. It's an exhibition. Logan's way heavier. You know, I mean, I mean it's just it's unbelievable what these kids are accomplishing. It really is, and they're winning. They're actually winning these fights. Logan has one they didn't win, but they're winning the fights. They're calling out better and better opponents every time. It doesn't get any bigger than Floyd for Logan Paul, but Jake keeps advancing and moving up and calling out more MMA fighters. So you got to give them their props. You got to give them their respect for what they're doing. But man, oh man, when the, when these fights continue to be the biggest story in combat sports, we have a problem. The UFC is doing great right now. The UFC is kicking ass right now. The UFC was destroying boxing. Logan Paul's right. MMA was destroying. I'll say the UFC because MMA as a whole, it's the UFC. But at the end of the day, man, these kids are getting so much attention. They're making a ton of money. And social media stars and influencers are becoming as big as, quote, unquote, real celebrities. They are real celebrities now, Jeff. They're here to stay. Logan Paul's right. See, I I think if they cashed in on a short window, I think influencers are losing their influence. I I, I think that the social media shit is uh, we're not going to see another Justin Bieber found on YouTube. It is what I think. Uh, I, I think that those days are over, but Pauls have cashed in, and I think that they're going to close the door on that. But I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong. Maybe, but you're right. Yeah, man, the influencers are absolutely celebrities, and and they get treated like they're celebrities, and they and they get these these things that they shouldn't really get. It, they're just they're just breaking the norms. So so take take what the hell I say with a grain of salt. Whenever I say they don't deserve it, what what I really mean is they broke the norms on how to get something. And so they went a different route and I'm not used to that route, <laughs> you know? And so it takes a while to process how the hell you just went around everybody to get it. Um, it doesn't mean that it's less legitimate and it doesn't mean that, that we should all hate you for that. Uh, it just, I'm just not used to it. You know, it's just, you're not used to seeing it, that the road to get to where they are is a grind and it wasn't for them. And so, you know, I understand, you know, I even me self-evaluating why the hell I hate the kids so much. And it's because I feel like they did shortcuts, but, but who the hell knows, man, I would take a shortcut too. You know, if I'm going to walk 30 miles or you tell me I can take a shortcut, and it's going to be two. I'm taking a two mile shortcut every single time. And so I got to be yeah, careful. To keep every myself, time. Yeah. I got, I got to be careful to keep myself in check 
when it comes to these two guys, because I do want to call them clowns. <laughs> you know, I do want to yeah, call them yeah. freaking. It's easy you know, to pile on. Be, yeah, and and maybe maybe they're just changing things, and I'm caught up into not not uh, being able to keep up with the changing environment. Um, but yeah, man, they've changed it all on its head. Social media has changed everything has absolutely changed everything. But, you know, people, we got to be careful whenever we talk about the UFC killing boxing and everything. Boxing was largely went off TV and television networks went with mixed martial arts because it was a cheaper product. Like, they didn't have to invest as much. And so they had more to gain with, with less investment. And, and it worked out for all of the networks. It worked out for Spike. It worked out for Fox. It's working out for Showtime, for Bellator. It's working out with everybody, right? Even, even the promotions that aren't the UFC – are doing well on television. And so You're right. it, it, it was, it was just kind of the environment. And, and I never framed it that way. I, I, you know, when James Tony came over and fought in the UFC, I tried to be careful not to frame it that way. It's not MMA versus boxing. It's just that boxing got too complicated to deal with, you know, and networks decided too many that, organizations, promotions, with. belts, the best fighters, yeah. not fighting each other. We got fury wilder again. Couldn't work it out with Joshua. These guys for years didn't fight each other. Floyd fought Canelo too soon. And um, and uh, Pacquiao Smart too late, though. but Jeff, this, <laughs> this is Floyd. Sunday, and we're we're going to be on live at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 Eastern on Sunday, the sixth for this fight for Mayweather and uh, and Logan Paul, and of course for Paul and Woodley too. Look at this fight card: Badu Jack and Dervin Kalina. That's a great boxing match. That's a rematch. Badu Jack is an up and coming star. He's also a Mayweather fighter. Mayweather's got a bunch of his guys on this card, and then also on this card, if you're looking for some name value, some sizzle. And also kind of keeping in line with what they're all about. Chad Johnson, a.k.a. Ocho Cinco, a.k.a. one of the guys who comes and covers the UFC sometimes. And I saw him at the McGregor Cowboy fight. He's been in the press conferences. He was there for Masvidal and Usman. And remember, he asked um, Masvidal if he's going to win because he was betting on him. Didn't win that bet. But he's going to make his debut fighting against Brian Maxwell, who's an MMA veteran and a bare-knuckle veteran. So Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, yeah, I mean, did he not watch Jose Canseco? Did he not watch Nate Robinson? I mean, what's going on here, Jeff? Herschel Walker did well. Herschel did well. But, man, Chad Johnson, balls of steel to get in that in that ring and fight against Brian Maxwell. I mean, yeah, I mean, I just think that they're easy paydays for, for, for some of them. Some of them are going to take it seriously. You know, some of them are going to take it seriously, and other ones are not. Other ones are going to go out there and get – like, I don't think Canseco took his seriously. You know, uh, Herschel Walker takes everything seriously. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything is serious to Herschel Walker. Uh, I don't think Conseco, and, and even if Conseco took it seriously at his age, what the hell was he going to do anyway? But I think that you're going to see these opportunities come up for a lot of people, and I think you're going to see them take it. I mean, I, th I think Anderson Silva it took actors. it against Julio Cesar Chavez. Anderson yeah. Silva, well, I think you're Junior. see it with even actors, right? Uh, yeah. Whenever you have a washed up actor, what's the fastest way to get back to the spotlight? Get into a fight with Jake or Logan Paul. You, you know, um, they, yeah, they, they flipped the whole combat sports and celebrity. I mean, hell, I, I was selling them short. Not only have they flipped combat sports on its head, they've flipped celebrityism on its head. <laughs> you, you know, because uh, what are, what's their talent? You know, the, it's kind of this shock, this shock and awe kind of revamped jackass kind of. That's how they made it, you, you know, right? Uh, and then now... They, they, they just keep morphing into something different and it keeps growing. I mean, yeah, man, they, they've changed social media. They, they've shamed, uh, changed what celebrity is and they flipped the combat sport on this world. So, man, I mean, I don't want to sell them short. I just don't think I like them. Like whenever I listen to them and I hear them talk, I'm just like, my God, either I'm going to get my ass kicked by Jake Paul or I'm going to fucking beat his ass. I can't sit in a room with 10 minutes with people like that. <laughs> you know? Uh, and so I'm probably going to get beat down by Jake Paul at some point. Um, you know what I mean? I just don't view them as I like, do. They're just shallow, superficial fucking YouTube kids, man. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. But like I said, maybe I'm old and out of touch. So I, I, I'm not oblivious to my position. <laughs> you know, maybe I am 49 years old. Maybe I'm out of touch with social media. Maybe Paul's have tapped into something I don't understand. Uh, and clearly all that's happened. You know, I just have to yeah. choose whether I bash them for it <laughs> or I give them props for it, man. And I'm on the field. And you, you might go back and forth on that. The yeah, homie talking, been speaking that. facts the whole show. Go. That's you, Jeff. That's all day. Good job, <laughs> yeah, no. J.R. Manuel. No, he's right. I mean, 
Jeff, this is fun doing the show with you because we get to talk about all the shit that's happening in the world and the news and react to them. You know, and it's true, man. And this is huge. This is uncharted waters, you know, virgin territory for all of us. But I, I'm still waiting to hear back from Tyron Woodley. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to run him down and get an interview locked down with him this week or whatever. Next, we have plenty of time before that fight card. I know we'll be covering that one. We're actually going to some of these fights, um, which is cool. So we'll be on live Sunday, Jeff, at 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern for this fight. Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather. August 28th is Woodley and Paul, and um, that's always a big UFC fight weekend, too. We got the UFC fight night this after a rare week off coming back. Look at that old footage. There's Joe Rogan. Wow. With hair. Joe Rogan with, with hair. hair. Look at that. I don't even know. You know, I don't know where that is. I was getting ready to say, I, I don't know where that is. Where what where is? He, where that is. What event that is. That's early, though. Joe Rogan's got his hair, man. That's probably the UFC 40 or some shit, you know. I don't, I don't know. It's way back, way back in the day. I was trying to look in the background of, of what city that's in because it doesn't look like Vegas. That that's was the great Ryan Bennett who we talked about at the open of the show. That was a show at the Bellagio, I think 37 and a half. Uh, oh, 37 and a half. That's Chuck Liddell, Vitor Belfort. That's where Chuck Liddell knocked down Vitor Belfort dramatically uh, to win that fight by decision. That, yeah, that was a great event. Uh, Man, more yeah, importantly, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say Ryan Bennett, when, who's the last person to get an interview with Joe? No, Joe doesn't do interviews with anybody ever. I've tried for oh. years to get Joe, and, and he, no one gets Joe. <laughs> People, no one. people don't look Ryan Bennett was was different man I mean we had Joe Silva on every event <laughs> you know if we had the UFC matchmaker on and we had you know uh, we had Dana White on pretty much for every UFC event and so uh yeah man Ryan Bennett and it was 15 years yesterday since that, that tragic accident yeah the hitman they changed everything though you know and now we, we touched on it at the beginning of the show and I'm going to touch on it here at the end uh Brian's fingerprints on MMA is felt everywhere, right? From, 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 the, from the way websites are run, he set up the model for that with, with, the, with the podcast, uh, you know, driving content and, 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 you know, the sort of double dipping, right? You're able to get the, the sponsorship for the, for the radio shows up, and, and you're able to, to drive the content. And he, he, Brian Bennett was started that model. Every website uses it now. Uh, there wouldn't be an Ariel Hawani if there wasn't a Ryan Bennett. Uh, Ryan was on ESPN radio. He was on mainstream television when the UFC wasn't, uh, you know, he was adding legitimacy to the sport before the sport had legitimacy. Uh, I worked for Damon Martin for MMA fighting was under Ryan Bennett. Y you know, we we've had people, great people. John Morgan was, was, you know, from our chat, uh, fr from our forum, um, uh, George and goes from, from MMA junkie radio from, from our forum. You, you know, I mean, Ryan Bennett has touched shit tons of people in the sport. Dave Mandel from share dog. I mean, share dog hell back in the day. There wasn't, but a handful of websites even cover covering this. Uh, but, but I, I've actually reached out to John Morgan because we've had disagreements in the past and told him whenever I got the editor's job and, and, and we've kind of been responding back and forth, just how, how big of an umbrella Ryan Bennett has right now in the sport, mm -hmm. you, you know, that we, we have, we have people everywhere, all over, prominent positions uh, that were that were basically understudies, so to speak, or you know that Ryan Bennett was was our mentors. Um, and yeah, it's been fifteen years. It's crazy, man. It's it's absolutely crazy. That it's can been you that guys long. hear this, Jeff? Can you hear this? Let me. I'm gonna. Do you hear that right now? I barely can hear it. What is it? Can you guys hear it on the air or no? No, it's uh, it's it's one of our MMA Weekly guys asking Dana White what Ryan Bennett meant to the UFC. So if you guys could hear it, I wanted to to play it because it's something that you know was asked to Dana five years later. But I'm I'm not sure if you can hear it. I uh, cannot hear. Is that it. not working? No. Okay, crap. He said Look, Ryan I was do, a good guy. I, I mean, liked him, and it's you know Dana very respectful and really appreciated Ryan as well. I'm and I'm I mean I'm biased, but I think that I think eventually we'll see Ryan Bennett in the UFC Hall of Fame. I I, I remain hopeful for that. He has to be. Uh, I, I think that I think that he deserves it. I think he earned it, and I, I think that that's the right thing to do. Um, but yeah, Jeff Sherwood posted yesterday. You know, where would Ryan be today? You know, where would the sport be today? And I, I can't answer that. I, I, I it's yeah. just hard to answer that. I mean, you know, whenever when that day happened, it was with the Fight Network. He was the face of the Fight Network, and he was doing so many things. But the sports changed so much. You know, hell, he he might have been commentating Triller. 
you, you know, I mean, who knows? You and never know. Opportunities, yeah, opportunities have come up. So, and he was a broadcaster, you know. It, 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 uh, other people, there would be a couple of people who didn't have jobs today. I'll say that. Uh, and Ryan Bennett would have those jobs. Uh, but I yeah, don't he might have been the be. first ESPN guy. You know, he might have been that guy. He might have been the Fox Sports One guy. Like for sure, he was right there in the middle of all that. Yeah, I mean, we had signed. He had signed on to be the face of the Fight Network, you know, and the, and the Fight Network took a huge hit in in Ryan's passing as well. You know, they 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 put all their ducks in in the, in the Ryan Bennett basket, man. And, and look, Ryan, they should have. <laughs> you know, the, uh, if you're going to do that with someone, Ryan was the person to do it with. It just tragically, uh, you know, was cut short on their end, on our end, and on on everybody's end. Um, Can't believe it's been 15 years, man. I can't either. Last night I, I didn't know Ryan. I wasn't covering the UFC yet. I never met him. Didn't know him, but I sure as shit watched a ton of stuff that he did as a fan over the years. And you know, he yeah. was definitely one of the top guys. He was one of the guys who helped get the UFC and MMA where all of us are right now. I mean, and not to say it wouldn't happen without Ryan Bennett, but he definitely is a big part of it on the media side, and he should be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm grateful to him for what he built here at MMA Weekly as the co-founder. Guys like you and Ken and our whole team literally have been working here for so long and you know it, it really is hard to believe it's been 15 years jeff but that's the point i'm getting to in life at 49 like holy shit was that 15 years ago holy shit that was 30 years ago oh my god yeah. like literally trying to think back and go wow life has a way and you know some some people are taken from us way too soon and it's tragic yeah. and it sucks but he was definitely a guy who uh the world lost a big one yeah 15 years man i mean like i said sometimes it seems like a lifetime ago Right. Like like it like it was just a dream, you know, a, a lifetime ago. And then other times it was like it's yesterday. Like I said, last night I opened up emails, uh, the email exchanges from that day and shit, man. It's just because people don't get the whole story. You know, I don't even like talking about it because everybody's like, you know, Ryan Bennett died in, a, in an automobile crash. And, and, you know, he was the founder of MMA Weekly and he was a family man. And, and they don't, and I don't think that they encompass the whole damn story. You know, the guy moved back home. He had made it. You know, he just built a house. He, he was in the happiest point that I'd ever seen Ryan. And look, Ryan's a happy dude, right? I mean, I've never seen Ryan unhappy. But he was the happiest of his happiness uh, right before that happened. And I just don't think that people capture that, you, you know, that, that he had made it. He, he had done what he wanted to do. Um, he just didn't get to see it through, you, you, you know. But but he had done. He you know, moved back to Utah. He built the home that he wanted. Uh, his family and everybody, you know, the, the – the mixed martial arts made it, you know, Ryan didn't, what didn't take a chance on some fluke sport, you know, everything was perfect. Everything was absolutely perfect for every one of us. And then boom, you know, we wake up to that phone call. And uh, so, yeah, man, I don't, that, those email exchanges are nice, man. Whenever I go back and look at him, because he's such a positive guy, you know, he's such a positive reinforcement constantly, constantly pushing you to be better. Uh, but then, you know, like, like I said, I can't, it takes you back to that day takes you back to that day, you know, and you're, um, Ryan was in a good place, man. That, 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 that's all like I'm going to even really, really touch on that. I'm just going to move on from it. Ryan was in an well, extremely yeah. good place that day. I mean, an extremely good place. And that's, you know, to me, that's tragic. And it's also, also, you know, a beautiful thing, you know? And so I kind of fucking bounce back and forth on that. Um, but yeah, and you named your I son, Ryan. I mean, yeah. yeah, I named my son Ryan. It depends on who I talk to, man. You know, I can't talk to um when I talk to Jeff Sherwood or Tom Call, I always get emotional about it. But I can go on tag, you know, and talk to George and goes and not. It just kind of it just kind of depends, man. You know, uh, but yeah, Ryan was a huge loss. Uh, we should honor him. <laughs> you know, everybody should honor him. The sport should honor him. The UFC yeah. should honor him. And uh, and we have honored him, you know, Trick. Trig's son's name Bennett, right? My, my son's name Ryan. I mean, we, we've honored him in the most respectful way possible with the means that we had. Uh, and then I Absolutely. honor him every day. You, you know, I, I thought about it yesterday. I was like, you know, it's been 15 years, and what am I doing today? I'm doing exactly what the hell I was doing 15 years ago, right? I'm trying to find content yeah. for MMA Weekly. And so I, I kind of smiled, you know, because – because so many things have changed, but then again, not much has really changed in a, in a way. He would love in that you and Ken way. are still here, right? He would love that, man. Oh, yeah. And he would still be oh, yeah. here, too. He'd still possibly, I mean, who knows? It, it, there was no limit for him. But, you know, Jeff, a little treat for us right now, too. His partner, MMA Weekly co-founder, Scott Peterson, is joining us now through the wonders of modern technology on the phone. Mm -hmm. Scott wanted to uh, 
to hop on and um, and share a couple things about Ryan Bennett. 15 days, 15 years. Yesterday was the anniversary of his passing, and you know nobody knew him like you did, Scott. What what does Ryan Bennett mean to you? I think I think uh, Jeff hit a lot of it right on the head, and uh, he was he was just a great guy. I I went to college with him, and you know Ryan was a fun loving. Uh, you know he was the he was the circus leader of the party. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the sport of MMA, he, he profoundly affected it and, uh, affected Jeff's life, my life. Um, and we're still here and, uh, off of something that, you know, Ryan built <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's amazing. And, uh, his, <laughs> Take your time, Scott. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard to talk about. I mean, it's hard. It's and you know, Scott. Scott knew Ryan a lot better than I did. You know, you know, I was around Ryan in the days of MMA Weekly, and 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 I was constant contact with Ryan on a on a daily basis on updating the website and everything. And for those of us that were there, man, it, it is it is hard to talk about. You know, it, because. We put in so much time and work and, and we bought into Ryan's dream, you know, and, 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 and we saw it come to fruition. We, we, we saw it come to fruition. You know, we were there. Uh, we, we, were, we were taking over the world, you know, and then and then boom, you know, life, life happens. Uh, um, it, you know, and, and, and life does continue. And uh, I just uh, recently saw his uh, his his boy and. Uh, looks just like Ryan tall kid and you know life goes on his family's doing great and uh yeah sorry about <laughs> no you're fine like you're this. fine <laughs> no no you're fine you're fine man i mean like i said i've i've broke down on yeah. a lot of shows it's hard to talk about i mean you know and, and it's and, it's, and honestly i I've, I've i've talked to george garcia about this is that at the time we, it was hard to process because we 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 just we buried ourselves in work, right? We just buried ourselves in work and and, and moved on. And and I mean I don't want to I don't want to sound like moved on. We we just buried ourselves in work, man, and continued to do what Ryan Ryan would have expected of us. And um and so a lot of us or I didn't didn't really deal with it at the time. You know, you didn't have time to deal with it. You you uh and and so it, it just pops up like you know it rears its ugly head every now and then. You know, in a conversation with somebody. Or, or, or whatever. And I'll get, I mean, you know, I, I got, I got emotional last night. You know I mean? Like I said, my Ryan is 13 now and he's tall and lanky and, and, you know, Ryan never got to see my Ryan. And then, and then we were there every day and his youngest son, man, Ryan had all these beautiful girls. Right. And then he had his youngest son and, and I mean, on the air, you, you know, they would just get into these throw down fights, man. It was, it was so great to listen to and how, how close that family was and how, how much love that they had for him and how much love that he had for, for them. You know, and it, it was, um, Tanya, Tanya liked my post yesterday. That was, uh, it was good to hear from her after all this time. It's just hard to think about it and not go back to that day, Scott, not go back to that funeral and not go back to the kids, you know, and, and all the injuries and, 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 you know, from, we were sitting really pretty. And then in, in, in a moment's notice, shit got crazy, man. Chaos. I, I remember uh, the funeral. Uh, Ryan had such an impact on so many people's lives. This uh, gentleman that had a, a private plane flew out. And he he went and picked up Jeff. Didn't he pick you up yeah. and flew you yeah. on this? What was it, it like? Uh, a private plane? Like what was it? Like a four seater, six seater? Like a kind of <laughs> a small. Four, plane? It, yeah, it was four seater. Yeah, it was a, it was a single engine. <laughs> We, we flew over the damn Rockies in a single engine prop plane. I mean, oh boy. Uh, wow. That was, which is basically a go kart with wings. But yeah, he was a doctor from Atlanta, Georgia. And then I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford to go. And as soon as I said that, he, he, he asked for my phone number and he called me. And, uh, yeah. And he came and picked me up, you know, he, he, uh, and flew me to Ogden, Utah for, for the funeral. And I, I, I would have missed it. But, uh, that that's that's the impact Ryan had. Ryan didn't know that guy. The guy had never met Ryan. He he was just listening to the radio show every day, and and Ryan had that ability 
to make you 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 were intimate with Ryan, right? You were you were always the most important person in the room. That's what I always that was like Ryan's biggest gift is that he was always and it didn't matter who you were, what your status was, or or anything like that. When you were in the presence of Ryan, he always made you feel like you were the most important person in the room. And 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 that's just such a quality that no so it's so freaking rare. It's so it's, it's the so number rare. one thing in interviews. It's the number one thing is to listen. It's about the person you're with, your partner, the person you're interviewing, just like us. Our jobs on the show are to make each other better. And and nobody got that more and and did it better than Ryan Bennett. That that's my memory of him, just from being a fan and watching him over the years. It, he got the best out of people all the time because he genuinely cared. And that kind of passion, yeah. that kind of energy, that kind of positivity, the light that he put out into the world. I, I try to do that every day. We all do. We all try to be better. But he understood you're not the star. The person you're interviewing is the star. But you become a star by making everybody else look good. He got that from day one. And you can tell in every interview. And, and before we wrap this up, guys, we're going to play an interview from Ryan Bennett to close the show. But this is really special right here to hear Jeff and Scott talking about Ryan Bennett and his imprint. I mean, think of all the things in this sport that we have now that Ryan started. What a pioneer. Think about that. The things that he did first in MMA and UFC media. No, I mean, every, everything. Well, in, in the things that we didn't, he didn't do first, he did the best. You know, there were other, uh, Eddie Goldman had a, had a podcast, but, MMA Sound Off was the was the show, right? I mean, the entire UFC staff was in that chat every morning, you know, for 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 that show. Uh, That's unbelievable yeah, to Ryan, even think that would happen. Wow. Yeah, Ryan was just a pioneer, you know, and and he lifted up everybody, you, you know. I mean, he took a chance on some kid from Kentucky who, you know, who was just willing to work. Uh, he uplifted everyone, you, you know, he, that that's, I don't know how else to put it. He uplifted everyone in the damn room and everyone knew it, y you know? Um, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, yeah. And, and people he didn't, you know, doesn't even know from anywhere. He would like, I was with him one time walking out of a show and a, a guy comes up and is like, uh, Hey Ryan, can I have your press pass? Usually I, I'm kind of sentimental with the press passes. I like hold on to everyone. Ryan's like, sure, man. And he gave it to him. Years later, I saw this guy, and he showed me the press pass. He still had Orion's. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, and and so uh, Nate people. Head says in the chat. Oh, sorry, Jeff. I was going to say in the chat, <laughs> Nate Head said his son will remember him the way everyone remembers his dad. And, you know, Ken Pishna followed up that. And, you know, it's funny. Ken says, hey, I remember hanging out after the funeral with Ryan's son playing around, took me to the ground and armbarred me. You know, and uh, yeah, Ken even says Dana White cold called into the show at least once. I mean, it, it was an epic show. One of the one of the greatest shows that we've ever had covering MMA in the UFC and the most important show in the world at that time. You're right. I mean, when Dana White's cold calling you, it doesn't get any bigger than that. <laughs> no, I mean, there's so many crazy moments, right? We, we, we had Rampage Jackson and George St. Pierre in a rap battle. I mean, just think about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was NTSP, GSP? He sound like Wyclef. Parlez-vous français? <laughs> he switched to French. He switched to French. We 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 bent the rules and allowed him to rap in French. Uh, we didn't know what the hell he was saying, but it sounded beautiful. Um, you know, <laughs> Who, won? Like the, the, Who won? Who uh, won? I, I believe Rampage won. Rampage uh, won the battle. Yeah, I think Rampage won the battle. But it it was uh, you know he would get people to do. You know, all kinds of, you know, the, the Joe Riggs and Nick, Nick Diaz infamous fight at, at the hospital. That That's sound off radio. That's Ryan Bennett. Uh, y y you know, uh, I mean, Dana White called in. There was these two promoters who were talking about running the UFC out of business, you know, and they're going on this tirade. And the phone rings and it's Dana White who just, oh, my God, lays the smack down on these dudes so hard. Uh, Ryan could just get everybody to open up, man. You, you know, he could he could get every everybody. You feel, he, was, he made Jesus feel so comfortable. Yeah, you know, he was so disarming, and and so he, people told him things that maybe they shouldn't have told him. Uh, There's another one from Ken, Kevin Randleman, R.I.P. to the great Kevin Randleman. I I, I know his widow Elizabeth. It just, yeah. you know, that that's unfortunate as well. But Kevin calling in from his hospital bed, doing an interview, and you know that kind of access, that kind of respect that we had no, with that show. I mean, man, it just <laughs> we had Lee, we had Lee Murray. 
We Lee Murray called in the radio show from his hospital bed in England when he was stabbed in the heart and almost died. Uh, Lee Murray called in the show from his hospital bed. Uh, and I would have had him call in from the, from the prison, but they took his cell phone. <laughs> uh, those are just crazy ass times, man. I mean, whenever you look back, like I said, it's, it's hard not to smile. Like anytime you think about Ryan Bennett, I smile a lot because it, they were, like, um, the, the, the tribute video that, that his brother Randall made, you know, I, th I think Ryan was always on, right? Ryan was always in a good mood. They all, all the times with Ryan were good times. Uh, it's just whenever I start thinking about about where we were, where we were going, what we were doing, and 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 everything in Ryan's personal life that was coming, that was just working out perfectly, all snapped away. And 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 you know, it's just it's just hard to think back to. And plus, you know, we were there. We his kids were injured. His wife was severely injured. I mean, that, it was just a tragic day. It was a tragic day. They're they're doing good now. His his uh, one of his daughters reached out to me on. Instagram maybe a couple of years ago and was like, you know, this, this, I, I, it, I had posted up something about MMA weekly and she reached out to me and said, my dad started that website. And I was like, hold on. And I checked her name and I noticed her last name was Bennett. And I was like, Oh my God, this can't be true. So I reached out to her and it was Ryan's daughter. Uh, wow. I think that everybody knows, you know, everybody knows what, what, who Ryan was and what Ryan yeah, how special of a human being that he was. He was. I mean, I, I can't stress that. Look, I was almost unworthy. I'll say that I was unworthy. My heathen ass from Kentucky was unworthy of his kindness. You know, was unworthy <laughs> of his praise. Was unworthy of his uh, of, of of his you know loyalty. You know, I mean, Ryan went to bat. I mean, look, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, hell, my mouth is put. But, you know, I mean, Ryan's got me out of situations, and and you know, Ryan, and, and he believed in me when I don't feel like he should have. I'm glad that he did, I, and I could never repay him enough for that. But looking back on that time and who Ryan Bennett was and who I was, I'm just like, man, I totally didn't deserve to be where I was. Well, you still don't, so he'd be proud. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm still doing it, Ryan. Uh, that was great. Thank yeah. you, Vic, for that. Can we throw that quote back up? I, I missed it when we were laughing. But uh, thanks for the conversation, guys listening to you guys on my way home from work. This is an interesting subject. It needs to be covered. Thank you, Vic Kumazner, for that. It's It really is. I mean, that's one of the things that really sets us apart. And I'm so honored to be here at MMA Weekly with guys like you and Ken and Scott's on the phone. This is almost 20 years, man. 20 years covering the UFC is, it's dog years. It's like 140. I mean, because in those 20 years, think of what's happened. Think of the growth. Ryan Bennett at the forefront of all that. And, and here we are still standing and Ryan would love it, right? Still standing. And, and I, I've talked to you, Scott, about this. I mean, a big part of what we're doing here with MMA Weekly is to keep Ryan Bennett alive. Ryan Bennett may not be on this earth anymore, but Ryan Bennett will never die. Ryan Bennett will be here forever. He's got a legacy that's set in stone through his family, through all of us and all you guys who worked with him and all the content that he created and, and that the trails that he blazed in his short time on this planet. I love that we can leave an imprint that never goes away and we never really have to fully, you know, pass and move on because parts of us stay here forever. Very well put. Very well put. Yeah. And, and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully we can see Ryan get into that uh, UFC Hall of Fame one day and get the credit he deserves. Um, I, think, I think he will. Mark in so many ways and, and, and mostly is just, uh, you know, a good human being. Yeah, well, not just such a non. Because Ryan was one of the most moral people I've ever met in my in my life, and oh and, my and god, that's what I've said about my heathen ass. I mean, and he was so non-judgmental. You know, I mean, Ryan knew we well, we're polar opposites when it comes to morality. You know, there's why I, I was laughing, more. Jeff. You see that? Check that out up there. Read. You got to read this one. Well, and Je Jeff, maybe Jeff wants to tell the story about the hooker. <laughs> No, I'm, yeah, not. I'm not. But, yeah, Ryan, this, Ryan yeah. was that guy who can inspire anyone. As Jeff said, he made you feel like you were the only person in the room. All of us, a janitor, a hooker, it didn't matter. He inspired <laughs> all. And that literally popped up on the screen right as you were talking about the morals. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true, man. I it mean, was uh, actually, it was pretty. Uh, uh, there was a moral story behind that. <laughs> right. Look, Ryan tried to talk to that girl and, and figure out how to help her. You know, that, that's what was crazy about that. About the, here I am trying to, you know, have a funny moment on the road with, with colleagues and, and, and buy a hooker to do 
to do a, a little dance, nothing crazy. We, you know, people were married and all that, but you know, definitely a shock and awe moment, right? You like you have a you have a prostitute come in there and dance kind of crazy, and, and everybody's like, "Holy shit, what the hell is that?" Uh, Ryan took no part of it, but he didn't prevent us from doing it. You know, and he and he and he, and he, he, he understood didn't the value, from the, doing the, it. The, 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 yeah, he, he understood the community. So he was an accomplice. Being, the, <laughs> yeah, he, well, he was sort of an accomplice. But but then, you know, he just him talking to her. Her name was Mia. I still remember her name. Uh, in fact, that, that that MMA Weekly shirt underneath the dartboard, I got that day. Uh, that very day is when I got that shirt. Um, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan was, Ryan, you know, Ryan's It might have been I, the I, one I, that Mia wore. <laughs> it, it is. It is the one that Mia wore. It, it is. <laughs> Uh, it's a game. It's a game worn jersey, man. That's what it is. Yeah, but just him talk. Like, like I said, he was so non judgmental. You know, here, you know, a, a devout Mormon, and then and then you have this non believing heathen from Kentucky buying a hooker. And Ryan's like, look, I don't have to participate, but I also don't have to judge them for it. And, and it was only to- and it was only a dance, and that you know, just yeah. uh, <laughs> it was yeah, no, no, there was nothing. Yeah, I wouldn't have done that in front of Ryan. I wouldn't have bought a hooker to come back and do something crazy. She, I brought her in to literally make Scott feel uncomfortable. That, 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 that was the whole deal. That was you know, is yeah. because it, it, it worked. It worked. It, it some worked. things, some it things worked. never change. It worked. Yeah, and Scott, and Scott was very uncomfortable. We all got a great laugh out of it, and Mia went on her way. And uh, the, but Ryan was like trying to like help her. Like you don't need to yeah. be doing this. Why is a girl like you doing something like this? And uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my it God. Was, it, it's just so, it's just so good to hear. Like, like I said, Ryan would talk to anyone. It didn't matter who you were. Uh, you could be the lowest person on the totem pole or you could be the Pope, man. It, it just didn't matter. Um, he, his approach to you was pretty much the same. And, and, and that resonates with me a, a lot. You know, I, I, I look, if I could live a, if I could live to be half the man that Ryan Bennett was, then I'm success. If I could be a third of the man Ryan Bennett was, then I'm, I'm a success, you know? Um, that that that's how I feel about Ryan, man. I mean, changed my life completely. You know, I mean, I'm I'm not a spiritual person, but when I think about Ryan and, and what he's done, what he did for me, and, and and the way that he's you know kind of went out on a limb for me and stuff, I you know I, I I have a hard time sometimes not believing certain people were put in your life for a reason. Uh, and Ryan Bennett was absolutely changed everything for me. Man, that's what a tribute, guys. What a tribute to Ryan Bennett here today on the show. 15 years yesterday. I I love hearing stuff like this because one of the biggest things we have with MMA Weekly is our history, right? I mean, very few people have the history that we have with this sport and very few outlets have been there as long as we have. And it's something that, you know, we're all really proud of. That didn't happen without Ryan Bennett. You know, it didn't happen without Ryan. You know, you know, Scott, I don't know how how quick the story is and i don't know how good the story is because i haven't heard it but i would like to hear it and i'm sure the audience would like to hear it too how did mma weekly come to be how did you and ryan what what was that whole thing about and how did that start basically uh ryan knew that i i trained jujitsu and had a foot in the mma thing my brother fought and and ryan and i went to college together and did all kinds of antics and screwing around and doing jokes on people and uh, we played softball together, and he uh, he got hired. He was working for uh, NBC, out in Slo, uh, San Luis Obispo. He got a job out there. He started as a radio disc jockey, and then became the sports anchorman, slow, and uh, which was where uh, Chuck Liddell was uh, based out of with the pit, and. Uh, he got he got the he got the gig of interviewing people in the in the octagon that, that Joe Rogan does now. I think Joe Rogan did it before Ryan, and then when Zufa bought him, uh, he got Ryan got hired for that job. Ryan, unfortunately for Ryan, or fortunately, he was too tall for the job because he was t- <laughs> towering the fighters. It started yeah. with I'll take my shoes off, and then he'd like. Uh, tried to make himself shorter by spreading his stance with his legs out, but he was still too tall. But he came up with the idea. Let's, uh, let's, let's do a, nobody's doing daily news. Everybody at the time was just, uh, doing part time. And, uh, you know, and Ryan got me and was at first it was just like, let's, let's, I want to get my friends into the UFC, uh, for free. And that's what it started. <laughs> 
at <laughs> UFC 33, and then uh, and then and then it was like, hey, you know, let's let's start start the website and uh, and, and get things going, and, and yeah, it'll be I think 20, 20 years uh, in January next January it'll be officially twenty years for for MMA Week, but uh, crazy. Wow. Yeah, he uh, he loved the sport and he did a lot to to promote it and was always you know trying to get it on 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 regular TV because as Jeff knows back then you know it it was just such a niche thing as after John McCain the senator out of Arizona was was crapping on it and you know there's a lot of, it had kind of a stain that we we're trying to work off of the sport at the time and and Ryan yeah. had a big influence. You know, as part of that influence of, of helping to mainstream it and, is, you know, get it on into the, you know, make it normalized. One of the mm-hmm. first, like, quote unquote, legitimate sports broadcasters, professional announcer to take that love of MMA and turn it into what he did. Very few people back then were doing that sort of thing, especially someone, you know, actual a professional in that field. That was rare. You know, now everybody wants to do it, but that was extremely rare. And that was something else that he did. And. You know, you look at him sitting there talking to Chuck. Look how young Chuck is there. I mean, there's no gray in that mohawk or that goatee at all right there for the ice man. That's prime ice no. man, Chuck Liddell. Yeah, that's Chuck. That's a young Chuck. That's a definitely a young Chuck. Yeah, man, I mean, like I said, he he uh, Ryan changed a, a lot of people's lives. He, and he impacted everybody he came in contact with. You know, even people that didn't work for MMA Weekly. You know, Evan Showman from Showman Art. Ryan used to have him on. Uh, he drew these prints behind me. Uh, you know, just because he, he appreciated the guy's art. Uh, you, you know, when George and Goes were, were wanting to do, uh, you know, radio shows and stuff, right, Ryan, Ryan and, and, and to have guests on. Yeah, You know, I, th- I think that that's what made Ryan different than other people is that not only did he have the fighters, every fighter on the fight card. I mean, my God, remember 16 fighters in 16 days, Scott? God, I hated that. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. But it was brutal. It was brutal. And and But he would have these callers. We had regular callers. You, you know, the and, and the John Morgans would call in, and, and you know, the, the George, and, and then me and Damon. I mean, we, we all kind of started uh, a, a, a surrounded around this radio show. And, and, and turning around content and stuff. And, and Ryan uplifted every friggin' person in, in, in the sport. And one of my favorite moments was um, Eddie Bravo's comments after after the tragedy. Because Eddie and Ryan had, had, a, had a thing, you know. Uh, and, and Eddie sent, uh, sent a, very, a very emotional and apologetic, you know, uh, response to Ryan's passing. And, 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 I, and, and it was big. It, it was big of Eddie to do that. It, it, you know, especially at the time, it was a big of Eddie Bravo to do that. Um, but everybody chimed in, man. Everybody chimed in. Ryan had a way of bringing people together that didn't didn't necessarily, <laughs> you know, uh, fit together. But it worked. It, it was it, it was. Um, like I said, I, I've I've never met anybody like Ryan Bennett uh, uh, before or since, and and I probably won't. You know, I I, I probably won't. What a tribute, guys. I mean, I it, it, you, you get a little choked up. I mean, it's just one of those things. I mean, just so much history and so many great things. I mean, I remember watching Pat Tillman services when he was killed, and I was lucky to to be able to interview him a bunch of times over the years, and I was next to his locker when he you know, did his media scrum about 9-11. I've never done anything. My parents, my whole family served, and you could see it in Pat Tillman's eyes. Certain people are just special, you know, pioneering trailblazers, but I remember thinking back, to Pat Tillman's funeral, and they had a Navy SEAL speak. I think his name was Steve White, but he knew Pat Tillman through their military service together. And he said, hey, he goes, um, he goes, what are you going to do with your dash? Look what Pat Tillman did with his dash. I Guys, I brought Ken on. Uh, oh, there's Ken. Uh, yeah, they came with the tapestry, beard. straight from the Jeff Kane School of Home Decor. Yeah. <laughs> one one of the one of the OGs himself, Ken Pishna, who has uh, recently passed the reins of uh, editor on to Jeff Kane. Look at how much younger he looks and how much happier. <laughs> younger? Yeah. I don't know about younger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I look huge compared to you guys though. With, with, with full screen. <laughs> uh, that's Scott. That's that, Scott. That's a big big presence that you cast over the show, Ken. Yeah. 
right. Any, 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 up here. any, uh, yeah, Ken, 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 you were the first, uh, one that came on that Ryan brought on out, you know, after we started the site. Any, uh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was a long time ago. In been a while. <laughs> been a little bit. And I think No, it's been it's been such a like ride, man, because I, I know Jeff and I have similar stories because I um, you know when when I came on with Ryan, it was cause he was looking for somebody to cover an MMA show in Denver and he was just like, Hey, can somebody just go and like get me some results back from it? And like <laughs> you know, that's all he wanted and it's and it's like I could do more than that. So I'm talking to everybody and doing things and just, it was a lot, it was just a passion project at that time. Really. It wasn't a business yet. You know, Mm -hmm. we were all doing it because we loved MMA and we loved watching it. We loved being around it. So, and, and the internet was the only way to do it back then. Yeah. Yeah. Back, back, back when we first started this. Yeah. I mean, kid, I remember the first time I got payment, it was, it was in the form of DVDs. Yeah, you know, I was getting paid at the very beginning in the form of just DVDs, but I was okay with it because I wanted to see the fights. It wasn't on TV. You, you know, it was like the only way you could see those fights was to get the DVDs. Uh, but yeah, it was a passion project in the beginning for sure. For every one of us, I imagine, Scott, for you as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I at least got to meet Japanese girls over in Japan covering Pride. <laughs> so it, it really was a passion uh, project, truly. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan was the play-by-play voice of the WEC right before Zufa. Yeah. 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 And, K- and K1 and the IFC. and uh, This was the thing about old Ryan. He would, he would bring you in with him and, and levitate you. Um, wherever you're at, he was, he was, he was pumping you up and, and uh, making, you know, making you important. And you'd be like, it was like, uh, he's making me feel more important than I actually feel. <laughs> yeah. But that's what Ryan did. Ryan, Ryan elevated everybody up with him. He wasn't one of those people that, you know, uh-uh. was, com- he was competitive, but he brought everybody up with him. He wasn't like one of these guys that was uh, competitive to put people down. That wasn't uh-uh. the type of person he was. No, he lifted everyone up. I mean, not just all of us on, on the site, people from other sites too and stuff, you know. I mean, we were competitive with Share Dog and Full Contact Fighter and all the original websites that were around back then. And But we were also buddies with all of them too. And that was largely because of Ryan's inspiration. And mm-hmm. I mean, those guys all still reach out. Like in the last few days, they've all been reaching out to, I know Jeff and me and and Damon Martin, who used to be at the website, who's now at MMA Fighting, you know, um, we were around together for a long time. And and Ryan Ryan was that inspiration for so many people. I said in the chat there, like like uh, George and Goes over at um, over at uh, MMA Junkie doing the radio show over there. I mean, if it wasn't for Ryan, they wouldn't have that radio show. You know, but but he inspired those guys to do that, and and they ran. It and they got really good at it, and they're fantastic. They do a fantastic job. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that That's Ryan believed. Yeah, I think Ryan believed in people more more than they believed in themselves in, in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, and then and then you're stuck in a situation where you hear Ryan builds you up, and you're like, "Well, yeah, man, I, I, I yeah, I can be that. I can be that." <laughs> and so it's like yep. you saw your potential that you didn't even realize existed or there, or that's the way it was for me. A, a, a lot of times I was just like, wow, this guy believes I can do this. I better get my shit together and do it. Um, yeah, man, th- those were, those are the best of times though. You know, th- those are absolutely the best of times uh, on the road with all those early outlets. What do you we think about Ryan would bit. think of right now, guys? What would what would Ryan say about Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather and Jake Paul and Tyron <laughs> Woodley? I wonder what his thoughts would be on all this. I don't. Probably just going with it. Okay with it. Yeah, he'd roll with it. Part of the pro wrestling fan too. It's part of the show. Yeah, yeah, he loved pro wrestling. Yeah, I would say it'd probably just be like, "Well, they're fighting. We're going to cover it." (laughs) You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah, he'd roll with it. I remember those days back when we would go to the UFCs early on. 
and Jeff kind of touched on it there for a second. I'm like, I remember when there'd be like six, seven, eight of us there sharing a room. <laughs> We two beds, two beds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Je- Jeff bringing in hookers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not that not wasn't an everyday occurrence. Let me tell you, that was not an in Jeff's defense. That wasn't a common thing. No, smoking yeah. smoking here's, joints outside the TV trailers. There most of the time with this. <laughs> when people are smoking cigarettes. <laughs> oh, I just I just went to the floor that the Brazilian pl- fires were staying on. Uh, yeah, that the back in the day was. I mean, it was. I mean, looking back on it, because the, even the UFC was small, right? I mean, the yeah. the whole UFC staff was in the the hotel bar, right? I mean, the the whole yeah, like the whole all five damn people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all five people: Dana, Joe Silva, uh, Beth, and then and then I don't yeah. even remember who. who How all crazy is that though? A, a UFC Keith with a staff that small. Then. Wow. Oh yeah, but they're oh. all those people. Um, who aren't some of them are still at the UFC? You know, Joe Rogan's been there forever, Beth has been there forever. Yep, Beth, I still see her. Um, you know, some of the people from that time now have gone on to do other things that are still amazing, you know. Um, yeah, and people through Melissa. the years, Dave Schaller, who worked in PR, there is now with the Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, Dave's PR. a good guy. Yep, and you know. Keith was there. Keith Evans was there a long time. He was one of the original guys. He's over running. Um, he fight runs TV fight. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, that's and right. Joe, Keith was over there. And Joe Silva was awesome back then. I remember you were saying earlier, Jeff, getting paid in DVDs. Remember when we were the only way to see the fights, we were trading VHS tapes mm-hmm. just to watch fights. Yeah. And I remember sending tapes back and forth with like Joe Silva and another guy in Japan, we would trade tapes all the time just because we wanted to see these fights that you couldn't get on TV. Or something. Was it Dragon Head yeah. in Japan? Oh, man. It might have been. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember wow. Dragon Head? I met Dragon wow. Head in Japan. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I, it was funny. It was my first Shudo show after getting to Tokyo. And Ryan said, you need to meet up with Dragon Head. He's going to get you some tapes. Because like you said, it was VHS tapes. So I thought that Dragon Head was like some well-known guy. But he was just <laughs> on the forum. He was just in the forum. Right. So I see Gen- uh. Genki Sudo cage side at the fight. And I go up to Genki Sudo. And I'm like, Dragon Head, do you know where Dragon Head is? And he's like looking at me, Dragon Head? He's like, <laughs> and that's when I realized, oh, He's probably an obscure figure, and Genki Sudo <laughs> thinks I'm a, a whack uh, foreigner, some guy gene, crazy guy gene. <laughs> well, and now people out there watching this right now might be kind of going, Genki Sudo? What are you talking about, Scott? Uh, okay. yeah. we, are, we are all one. We are Genki all one. Genki Sudo. Well, I don't know Genki Sudo, what? look him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, exactly. I just want to see Scott running around Japan. That's what I want to see. Uh, <laughs> if I wasn't, maybe not now. If, if I wasn't day. married, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Note but we had—I mean, looking Japan. back on that, you know, as, as crazy as the times were, we we had everything covered. You know, it was Scott in oh, Japan, yeah. and then Ryan with the WEC, UFC, and K One. You, you know. Um, we we had all of our bases covered. Surprisingly, you know, I look back on it, and 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 we had. Um, I think Ryan. Guy, I think Ryan was worried had, for my soul over there in Japan because I remember <laughs> him and his wife. He, he'd call me and they'd be in bed, and his wife would come back, Scott. Come on, yeah. When are you coming back to America, Scott? This you you've been there long enough. You've been there yeah. long enough. It was like, yeah. <laughs> Those were great yeah. times though with the with those pride events, man. I mean, that was the that was the heyday of mixed martial arts, in my, in my opinion. Was those pride grand prix and the UFC all going on at the same time, and everybody's arguing over who's better, Fedor or a, you know, or Randy or, or Couture? Near, yeah, Randy Couture, and you know, and, and then and then Chuck, they oh. inserted Chuck into that grand prix. I mean, it, those were just such, that was the heyday of the sport, in in my opinion. That's uh, the one guy, Fedor. Fedor is the one guy I look at and go, man, I wish he would have had a UFC run. That's yeah. the one guy more than yeah. anyone. 
is Those that were fun time though that's back when it was still grassroots and uh you know you you scott and jeff or scott and ryan had a lot of the big stuff covered and guys like jeff and damon and i would like drive 12 hours in a car to a small <laughs> king of the cage show or hook and shoot or yeah. whatever you know? hey i had to drive uh, too ryan was the only one flying that's true and yeah, I, had yeah. to, I had to drive. I remember driving to, from Utah, to Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh my and, God! It's a long and, ride, oh and being sick, and having to sit on the shitter at a truck stop where the door <laughs> could not be locked, and I'm sitting there. Just, oh no! And can't, uh. and this and some little kid opening the door and staring at. Me. <laughs> Going, wondering why I'm sitting on his toilet and is like, nice. uh, could you please shut the door? And just the things we would do to get to, to get to the shows, we would just drive, get to the shows and then the, and sleep in Ryan's room. Six people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the backpack of equipment that we had. That I, I, I had to bring up, uh, you know, toilet. That's a Scott hey, type story there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I remember um, April and I, my wife April and I drove out to um, Salt Lake City one time when both Ryan and Scott were off somewhere else. I think Scott was in Japan at the time. Ryan was probably in Vegas. And we went to cover the Extreme Challenge and Super Brawl had this big middleweight tournament thing going mm. on. And lots of big name fighters there at the time. And like Chuck Liddell was there cornering. Tim Kennedy was there fighting. <laughs> a bunch of other people and so we go out to the show it's at the salt air palace which scott would know which is out oh of yeah salt lake, outside of salt lake city or the show and concerts so monty cox the promoter didn't really have cars lined up properly to get everybody back and forth but April that's a I proper promoter's there. name that sounds like a promoter's name <laughs> monty cox yeah and yeah. so we helped shuttle people back from the show afterwards and like after the show everybody wanted to get back right away so we have jason miller tim kennedy colin oyama who is a coach he's still a uh, coach yeah. Liddell, all in our jeep we had a wow jeep. and chuck there was no room chuck was like the last one to come out and he's like can i get a ride and they were like we got we don't have any room left and we still had our bags in the very back of the jeep where the door opens up and so he's like, I can fit in there. And he, and he had a couple of Del, who's like six foot what, you know, six five or whatever. He's like crunched up in the back of our Jeep with our luggage on his cell phone the whole time we're driving back to Salt Lake City. It's like, can you imagine that? Chuck Liddell, this guy, you know, UFC champion. How long of a ride is it? Up in the back of your car. Yeah, and we didn't even get a picture of that. Okay. How long was the ride? Oh, now it'd be all over Instagram and everything. Know. It's about 30 20, minutes or so. 20, 30 minutes from Saltair. Yeah. 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 The Iceman riding with the luggage, man. Like, it's like being on the Titanic. You're in steerage. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that's, exactly. that's crazy. Wow. That I forgot about those stories because I drove from here to Quad Cities, which is like eight oh, or yeah. nine hours, to cover one of the first IFL. Uh, and that's I Iowa, right? Quad Cities? Yeah. 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 Um, and I ended up having to give Frank Shamrock and his team, a ride back from the venue to the hotel. And weren't their pilot? I mean, they're hanging out the windows. I mean, it was crazy. I had totally forgot about th doing that stuff uh, until Ken brought that up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, things things were crazy back. I mean, we were all the sport was just surviving, right? I mean, we were all just kind of surviving mm -hmm. and doing what the hell you had to do. And if it was six people in a hotel room, it was six people in a hotel room. If Chuck Liddell's in the back, that's that's just the way it was. If you got Frank Shamrock <laughs> stuffed in the in the you know the floorboard, that's that's just what it has to be. <laughs> crazy. How hard was crazy. it to not cross lines with shit that people were doing that obviously you couldn't report about or write about? Or I mean, now people would put them out, but you guys had this code back then, and you saw things, and there were a lot of things going on that. You know, like where you had to you had to draw that line between journalist and you know someone who just happened to be there, and you're like, shit, I hope I didn't, because you know, you sometimes you see something and you just wish you could unsee it, and you're like, shit, man, I didn't see it, or I didn't see that. I'm just <laughs> I'm going over. I, I don't think it was I'm Ryan's going. influence. That yeah. was Ryan's influence. He was a professional. You know, he worked at NBC, and 
he taught us from day one how to act as professionals you know we always had to back up our sources and make sure we had our ducks in a row before we reported anything and you didn't you you could you know that was like the old days of the nfl when reporters would fly on the planes with teams you know when you cover the, <laughs> the beat of a certain team back in the and 70s they'd fly around together and we would do that we'd hang out with these guys but you you knew there were lines you just had to separate you had to, yeah. you can't cross those lines and and you're breaking somebody's trust too you know and of course like literally point, lines a lot of cell phones like <laughs> like well you, you we did a good job of letting fighters know and and us understanding when you are on and off the record right we're in the yeah. media center. Everything you say is on the record, right? You're in the damn media center uh, or a press conference. But if we're out having dinner, I, I, I'm going to be an asshole if I report what your conversation you had with your wife, even if it revealed something crazy, uh, you, you know, or, or, you know, to report that, you know, so-and-so had too much to drink, you know, I mean, I mean, there's yeah. tons of stories that we have over the years for sure uh, that didn't get reported, but I don't think that they needed to be reported. You know, I mean, there, there's just no reason to report Miguel Torres got, had too much to drink last night. You, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I never felt like that was our job. And, and now, but but media's changed, right? We're all in this T, TMZ environment. Now, today, I, I guess you would cover that shit, right? I don't want to cover that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't either. Know, no, me neither. Mean, you know, I yeah, like keeping my athletes thing, in their sports and, and not knowing too much about them in their personal lives. I mean, I, you know, being a kid and your world gets shattered when you find things out about your heroes. I, I like leaving it in the cage with the fighters because fighters are crazy. Let's be real. I mean, I was talking about this the, over the weekend with Marco Madsen, the Olympian from Denmark, who's, you know, 2-0 in the UFC, going to fight Clay Guida on August 21st probably the best wrestler in the UFC right now. And he reiterated to me what other guys said. He goes, hey, we grew up in empty rooms getting the shit beat out of us. How can you not be humble? But on the flip side of that, fighters are crazy. So you think about it. You're getting punched in the face. You're training every day and fighting. You're a professional athlete. You're young. You feel invincible. You feel bulletproof. The parties, the things that have, that have gone on with athletes over the years, it's just it really is – for some, not all of them, you get your Wonder Boys and a lot of people in there like that, but it's a crazy lifestyle. It is an absolute crazy lifestyle. People aren't making a ton of money unless you're at the very top of the sport, and there's a lot of partying, a lot of things going on. It has changed a little bit in the in the TMZ age, and people are a lot more careful, but I, I can only imagine you know, what it was like to even to, to be Mickey Mantle and Billy Martin and Whitey Ford and those guys, and there's no media anywhere. You did whatever you wanted. Nobody reported it, and that, that mentality sort of – I don't think it was maybe late 90s, early 2000s where that started to change. And now everything, you know, was being reported and there was no sanctity anymore. And, you know, you have people who literally will report anything at any time to make a name for themselves. And that's that changed a lot of what journalism was about mm -hmm. for me when the story became when the individual reporting the story started thinking they were more important than the story, you know, because Walter Cronkite never did that. You know what I mean? Like Walter Cronkite knew. Ryan Bennett knew. We're talking about Ryan. Ryan Bennett knew he wasn't the story. But he was going to bring you the story through him. That's what our job is. We're not the story. We're there to report what's going on with the story. And too many people blur that line and they want to make that big name for themselves by outing someone or, you know, doing something they shouldn't do and, and putting something out there that should be kept behind closed doors just to make a quick what? name for themselves. And it always backfires. It never works. Well, I, th I think the sport's different today, right? I mean, honestly, back back then, the way that uh, the UFC was promoted before Zufa was human cockfighting, right? Blood, thirst, and you John know, McCain, and yeah, then, yeah. And so you had that, and so a lot of times, or, or looking back on it, I felt like I was trying to protect the image of the sport, uh, and, and we we're trying to convince people that it's not that, it's not that, and so we were fighting. Uh, a battle to stay professional and a battle also for accuracy. And, and, and I just felt like it was, it was different than, than we are now. Uh, yeah, man, back then, if, if something happened at the bar or whatever, we probably wouldn't have reported it because that it, it wasn't the time and place. And, 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 you know, I think that everybody in journalism knows, right? I mean, you're, I'm interviewing you. We're, we're, we're set here. I've got questions. And at the end of the interview, when the camera goes off, 
and 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 the questions are over and we go to a, to have dinner what's said at dinner is not on the record man you know it's just not on the record that's not what you agreed to that's not what i agreed to and and i think that uh that has changed in, in the sports change in all sports not just the ufc or mma it's changing all sports where where athletes you know you have paparazzi now that follow people around you know a, a picture of friggin yeah, I don't. I don't even know. I'm trying to think of somebody, man. A, a picture of the hottest, you know, actress in her bikini is worth millions or hundreds or thousands of dollars now today. And so the media has changed a, a, along with the 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 the, the uh, demand on social media and stuff. And back in the day, it was pretty much straightforward covering. You know, it was interviews, press conferences, and then what took place outside of those media type of settings. What wasn't reported because it was it wasn't relevant. Yeah, I mean, at when we started with Ryan, it was everything is off the record until you say this is on the record, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't go the other direction. Nowadays, everything is on the record until you say off the record, you know. And even yeah. then, people are still playing gotcha with that. So mm-hmm. we don't we don't play those games. We've never played those games, and we still yeah. don't play those games. We have so much integrity as as a team, and I have nothing to do with that. I'm just saying, as a team, we have a lot of integrity. You know, on the website, when you look at what's reported on MMA Weekly, and you look at the stuff that we do with our shows and on social media. And I like to think I'm protecting the integrity of the sport right now, to use Jeff's phrase, guys, because everyone in the chat's actually legitimately breaking down Logan Paul versus KSI and the fights that he's had, and he has two points to do. So they're actually breaking down and analyzing Logan Paul as a boxer in the chat. That's how good our fans are but by me not talking about it all that much i feel like i'm doing my part to protect the integrity of the sport too but the look, if you look at the chat right now they're they're legitimately i mean you will not see a better breakdown of this fight anywhere than what we have going on with our fans in the chat right now we've always had a great knowledgeable fan base always you know uh and, and we're fortunate for that you know we we didn't put up with a lot of uh I don't know. I'm not going to throw any. Yeah, you know, some websites, forums, and stuff had a reputation of, of just shenanigans and, and stupidity. Uh, ours was never one of those. What if Chuck Liddell would have said, I want my own website to be in there as a journalistic outlet? Like, like Connors, what? Are, what? I mean, that's that's unique too, right? I mean, how? What? Yeah. What are some of the other most creative things fighters have done or the UFC's done to figure out a way to not pay fighters as much over the years, right? But, I mean, proper 12s on the canvas, it's crazy. Well, T- Tito Ortiz was the first one with Punishment Athletics all over the cage. That's uh, right. Tito and, and, was, and wasn't and he? And I mean, and he and doesn't get the credit for being a pioneer that he was on the money side of the sport. Yeah. Well, at the time, man, I mean, it was a slippery slope at the time because Tito thought he was raising the pay for everybody else. But in reality, you're just the highest paid athlete on the card. And nobody else is getting paid anything. And you're not really advocating for fighters. You're not bitching about that. You know, you give your interviews and you say, oh, I'm lifting fighter pay and, and the things I'm doing, it's going to open the door for other fighters. Well, it, 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 that's, you know, that, that falls silent on people who are fighting for $2,000 on the undercard going, yeah, dude, you're looking out for me. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to bash Tito. Tito was a good, uh, but he had the punishment athletics all over the place. He had his own website. You know, I, I feel like Tito really was kind of a pioneer when, when it came to that. Uh, and then BJ Penn was kind of before Conor McGregor. You know, BJ Penn worked that deal in where his website got access, and, and, and they were inside the events like they were real media. And now Conor's done that with the Mac Life. And I, and I think that you can do that, right? There can be a BJPenn.com. There can be a Mac Life yeah. as long as they're legitimate news outlets. It's just once you start setting up softball questions specifically to promote Conor McGregor or BJ Penn, does that become a problem? I don't like any 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 look of um, of a conflict of interest at all. So I don't like that that those things exist. But I, I'd also be lying if, if I said that they couldn't coexist with integrity and work in the sport. Now I don't know if they if they do or not. Uh, but but yeah, they you've, Tito changed the sport for sure. Well, uh, should we should we wrap this up? We're on to two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we should. We should wrap yeah, it up. Having the and so much down around do the job and, and, and wrap this up in appropriate. Yeah, I did, kid. I, I just felt like I should shut up and let you guys reminisce. This has been a treat for me sitting here as a fan of Ryan's and as someone who's watched MMA Weekly for that long. 
just to hear you guys, and I hope the people watching in the chat and people on YouTube here have enjoyed it as much as I have taking that trip down memory lane with Ken coming on and, you know, Scott joining us. It's just kind of, it's a tribute. I mean, Ryan would be, he'd be smiling ear to ear right now if we saw the three of you guys. I mean, right? It's crazy. <laughs> Look, I'm going to say this. Only Ryan Bennett could get Scott Peterson and Ken Pishner to jump on camera on a moment's notice and talk about this shit. Because I've this worked at MMA Weekly for this a long time, true. and I couldn't get them to do radio. I couldn't get them to do that stuff. Today, they jumped on here like, no problem. Yep. Very true. That's amazing. That's awesome. I appreciate you guys. Ken, really appreciate you and Scott yep. for joining us. And just great memories of Ryan Bennett. The Logan Paul Mayweather stuff will be on this Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Are we going to do, guys, let's make the executive choice right now, Jeff and Scott. Are we going to do um, our, our preview show tomorrow or are we going to do it on Thursday this week? What do you guys want to do? So everybody knows what day and time uh, we're on. I'll leave that up to you guys. <laughs> All right, well, we'll figure it out. So it'll either be tomorrow or Thursday at 12 Eastern, yeah. 9 a.m. Pacific. Yeah. So yeah, it will, we're giving you clarity here days. on the show. Ryan Bennett would not be happy with this. He wants an answer. We all want the answer. <laughs> yeah, but I appreciate it. you guys, It's going to be man. tomorrow or Thursday, yeah. No, and I, and I appreciate Ryan Bennett for opening the door for guys like me. And, and every day when I do this, I try to, um, to honor his memory because those are huge shoes to fill here at MMA Weekly. Not like I look at it and I'm filling his shoes, but – doing some of the things that he did and being a part of this organization. We all have that every day as part of what drives us with MMA weekly and to keep that name going and to keep building. And we're almost at 600 K guys on YouTube. Keep those subscriptions <laughs> coming in, hit that bell, keep chatting with us. We really appreciate all the stuff you guys are adding to the chat. Some of you guys really going in depth on Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather, but I didn't know um, if we still wanted to wrap with that interview. Are we still going to play that on the way out? Or are we just going to wrap it up? There we go. We're going to finish there you with go. Ryan Bennett. Cool. And Chuck Liddell right here on MMA Weekly. Don't forget, every single time there's a UFC fight week, we have Fallout. We have the preview shows. We're live during the fights. We'll be live Sunday for Mayweather and McGregor. Keep subscribing. Keep liking. Follow us on every platform. And, of course, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the website, MMAWeekly.com. I'm Jim Greasehopper. That's Chef Kane. Thank you for being here, fight fans. Keep your game tight and your mind right. We're out with Ryan Bennett, the legend. man makes an appearance on the big show how you feeling man you good feel great um just getting ready to start training for that uh evan tanner fight uh in london or whoever else they come up with for me that's gonna be good man london well, how, how's that gonna be to, to fight overseas i know i know you fought in brazil you fought in different places is it, is it a tough adjustment to get your body ready for for such a long time zone uh the time zone doesn't bother me much i just that the, the trip kind of sucks but uh not a big deal it's you know uh, the flights have been full lately going overseas, and uh, it's uh, a small seat to be in for 12 hours or whatever you are on the plane. Man, I know you're ready for, for the title, man. I, I know you, you, you know, there's no doubt you're the number one guy in the UFC in the light heavyweight picture. Are, are you tired of waiting or are you ready to go, man? I'm ready to go, but, you know, I'm, I, I'll just keep fighting, keep beating people. That's, uh, that's my job and that's what I do, so... Uh, um, you know, hopefully that shot will come around. Matt Hughes giving you a round of applause. That's always good. Um, talk a little bit about uh, as, as far as things go for you now. Uh, you're a big movie star. Yeah, come here, man. Come here. What, what do you think of this guy, bro? I like this guy. Yeah. And, uh, the, uh, I, don't <laughs> um, I don't know, which Chuck. One, which one is this? Is this, is this him or his brother? <laughs> big Sam, right? <laughs> you going out, Chuck? Yes. You? Yes, we are going out. We're, where, where are you going? Got the game plan. What's go, who's go, who's going to hook up? Big post-fight party we're going to. Uh, and then we're going to Mojo's or the other place. Uh, the, it's right around. That's right here. Yeah, I think there's another bar right around there. Uh, black I can't eat there today. <laughs> this is off the air. That's on the down low. <laughs> hey, see you, Matt. So, uh, big movie star, man. What was that like uh, working with Jet Li, bro? It was cool. It was fun to work with. Uh, I had a good time, and I liked a lot. I met a lot of stunt guys. A lot of stunt guys I work with were really cool guys. So I had a, I had a lot of fun talk, hanging out with those guys. We spent a lot of time with them. You know, it was like uh, it was ten days, about twelve hours a day. So we just hanging out mostly, but it was it was fun. It was good. Now you're getting used to this movie stuff. You work with Red Man and Method Man uh, in their show. Is this your second movie now? Um, it's my well. I don't know if you count when I was like eleven. That's my third, but. Um, 
Yeah, that's my second one. So is, it, is it old hat? Are you still enjoying doing it, man? I enjoy doing it. It got, it got a little old, but, uh, it, I, you know, the 12-hour days and stuff, and I, I really wanted to train a little bit. You know, I would like a couple of days off here and there, you know, but, but it was all right. It was pretty cool. If Jet Li got in the octagon with the Iceman, what would happen? Well, that's not fair, man. He's, he's an actor. He's about, he's a, he's a small guy, you know. I'm a, you know, it's not, he's a, remember, he's an actor. I don't know, if it was a movie and he got an octagon, he's going to kick my ass. Is that for real? I mean, come on. So how did your scene play out, by the way? What did they have you do? What, what are you doing in this, in this movie? Oh, me, me and Tito choreographed a fight scene between me and him. Uh, we had some help. They helped us out, of course, you know, the stunt guys and stuff. But, uh, you know, we, they, they, they were real helpful, you know. They, they really helped us work with that, the camera. So getting used to not, you know, we know how to do it for real, but uh, doing it in front of the camera is a different deal, you know. Right. So they were really, lot, really helpful with us, helping us do that stuff. And then, uh, and then we come back in the ring late. We leave the ring, then we come back in the ring later, and we get involved in the little fight scene with Jet Li where he's fighting a bunch of guys. So it's really cool. Cool. All right, man. Chuck, I'm going to let you run, man. I know you got some, some things to do. I appreciate you as always, and, uh, and we'll see you in London, bro. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, going to try to entertain you in London. All right. The Iceman, Chuck Liddell.